On my way to the moon I don't think I'll be passing I'll make my own Alright guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a follow-up, you guys, to the last room that I did, which was last Wednesday. As we all know, it's been the holidays. And so, you know, I've been doing a lot of research, actually, to be honest with you. This is a rabbit hole that I have gone down. And although I have been quite aware of, um, you know, Saturn, Saturn's, you know, um, cube at the top, the eye at the bottom, all of that, I just wasn't making certain connections. So like I, I referenced in the first room, a lot of this was open, my eyes was opened up by um, a gentleman by the name of Jordan Maxwell. He has, you know, recently this year passed away and I was gonna try to bring him on here and they had agreed to come, but he went into the hospital like a week later, okay? So, you know, I just, you know, I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And once I actually dug my teeth into it, guys, I promise you, because I don't wanna bring anything halfway information. You understand what I'm saying? I want to make it plain and I want to make sure I have a full understanding of what is taking place here. Okay. Now, as you guys know, right, this is the matrix unveil. So welcome, welcome, welcome and share the room in the hallway, guys. The first part that I did, right, the first um, room that I did about this was, like I said, it was last Wednesday and we covered the basics of the matrix. Now, this goes very deep. I'm gonna do one more part, okay? But um, that part is gonna be specifically for Patreon because there's gonna be, that's when I'm gonna get into the religious aspects of this, right? And it's gonna tie into some of the things that has been floating around the media a lot lately, okay? So we're gonna be naming some names that we can't name out in, in, out, you know, in, in the public. At least I don't want to, because I'm not trying to fight with anybody. I'm just trying to share information as I am making these connections. Now, why is this important, you guys? Why do we care about, you know, quote unquote, Saturn or, you know, any of these other planets, right? What What's happening? Well, we should care because we should care about the nature of our reality. I think that's the reason why that most people are in here. We, you know, sense that something isn't right. You know what I mean? Like we're in some sort of a lockdown situation, like we're in some sort of a prison planet. You know what I mean? And so for me, I, it's something I've always known. So my lifelong goal has always been, you know, um, elevation of consciousness, but to also find the keys to understand the construct of the matrix. The matrix is one of my favorite movies. And I know that a lot of people, it help people to awaken. You know what I mean? I was already awakened before the matrix, but not to that level. There's levels and levels of the awakening process, right? Now, I don't want to dive straight into it because I kind of want to lay a little bit of a foundation before I tell you exactly that I've, in my mind, figured out pretty much the construct of the matrix. Now, now the title of this room is called Saturn matrix saturn matrix lord of the rings okay i know many of you guys remember the lord of the rings we also know that saturn has all these rings around it okay now what i will say is that and i, I i'm not <laughs> who you, okay it, it's a lot y'all so i don't want to give too much too soon but what i want to say is that saturn is not what we think it is okay according to david ike there is a saturn moon matrix, right? That they're working together in concertion. Now I've already done another room about, um, you know, the hollow earth. And I went deep into that and provide lots of data. You know what I'm saying? Basically that points to the, the, um, the moon actually being a satellite. So it's this, the construct of our matrix could possibly be Saturn. It could be Saturn, uh, working in conjunction with the artificially placed moon and um, something that's out there that we're just now starting, to, I'm just now starting to learn about, it's called the Black Knight Satellite, okay? Um, so why, you know, what is Saturn? So first of all, let's go with Saturn. So in mythology, Saturn is known as Kronos, right? He is one of the Titans. So he is the father of time, okay? So what, 
is time. Time is a construct that actually keeps us in a loop. On the top of the North Pole of Saturn is a hexagon, which it's a two-dimensional, um, you know, shape. But if you were to make that two-dimensional shape into an actual three-dimensional shape, it turns into a cube, okay? So this is where you get the black cube of Saturn, right? Now, this Saturn is worshipped all throughout um, our society. You don't even know that you're worshiping Saturn. You don't even know because we talk a lot about like what's going on in the entertainment world, you know, a lot of these different rituals that these celebrities are doing and it doesn't make sense. It's, it's just like, okay, well, it makes sense to me, but you know, to the average person, I know people want to know like, why, you know, who are they sacrificing to, you know, why are, are they into all of this? You know what I'm saying? This dark, um, these, you know, things that we're not into the sacrificing and blood and, you know, all those different things that they're doing. Okay. Well, you've heard about the Bohemian Grove. You've heard about, um, the Bilderberger group. You've heard about the Knights of Malta and many, many, many other, um, secret societies. That's just a few. Okay. Well, Saturn worship is tied into all of these modern day secret societies. And this goes all the way back um, to the times of even to Babylon, to the Babylonian times, okay? And, you know, it even goes back, come forward to Rome, okay? Rome used to be named, I think it's called Saturnia before it became Rome, okay? Um, on December 17th, this was in worship to the god Saturn, okay? So when you see, there's a particular um, placement that Saturn has in the sky that is kind of like an eclipse of a sort. So it appears to have a halo around it at a certain position in the sky. So there's many different things to symbolize Saturn. So that swoop that you see with Nike, the swoop that you see around like um, Internet Explorer, that symbolism, um, anytime you see someone with a halo over their head, um, that is a symbol of Saturn. Also, the infinity sign is a symbol of Saturn. Why? This infinity sign is a symbol of Saturn because it represents an eternal locked into this particular space, time, and dimension with the center and the middle point being actually the point of escape. Um, so like when you see these celebrities and you know what I'm saying, like they're doing all of this stuff and they have all this symbolism that maybe a lot of people won't even recognize until you recognize it. Okay. And when I do the video, um, for the part three, uh, for Patreon, I am going to put up a lot of these, cause they're all in the discord right now, but obviously this is an audio app. So you guys can't, I can't put up any pictures or anything like that. Um, one of the most recent things that you can point to is I did a, a room on Beyonce's um, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse when she released that Renaissance album. That was a complete ritual. And so this is what they, they're doing the rituals too, because Saturn is the god. Saturn, Moloch, you know, the owl, all these things are references to Saturn. If you look at her, the imagery of that, and once you know what you're looking at, then you'll be able to spot it. But it's very clear. She's actually wearing in one particular outfit, gold um, gold earrings that are Saturn earrings. They, they have actually a gold with a swoop around it. And they also she also has like a thing going around her head where her head is Saturn and then the rings are going around her head. This stuff gets pretty freaking deep, you guys, okay? So with that being said, um, we go. this goes all the way back to that particular period of time. Saturn is an old god. So when we say that, when I say that this particular, we're coming to the end of another, of a paradigm, that's the old gods. And it's time for the Titans ruled before. And you know what I'm saying? And um, now it's time for um, new gods to arise. But this is who these people have been worshiping. And it's all throughout the entire society. 
um, the, the next thing I want to talk about is, let's say, um, okay, so I posted some pictures in the Discord of where you can find these cubes in front of major buildings. There's one like in Manhattan. I think there's one in, um, um, not Switzerland. It's four different places that they're all located, but they're there, okay? When you're dealing with the cube of Saturn, you're also dealing with the checkerboard floors. Whenever you see those that are being depicted, you're dealing with that, okay? When the Roman Empire fell, now, okay, I'm sorry guys if I'm all over the place, but you gotta have been in all of my rooms <laughs> and heard all the things I've been saying about, because it's all stuff is together. When you're talking about like um, these people, you know, doing these different sacrifices and things of that nature, what they are dealing with, they're sacrificing to these different bloodlines. And so the bloodlines are the ones that we don't know their names this to this day, because what happens is the names are always changing. But these ancient bloodlines go all the way back to the times of Babylonia, Mesopotamia. And when the Atlantis was still going and the we had intruders, the Anunnaki that came onto the earth. This is where all of this began and when Saturn began to rule the earth. Now I'm gonna pause right there and see if anybody wants to chime in or if anybody has any questions. Hey Debbie, hey Chris, hey Lilith, how's, how's it going guys? Let me take a break. <laughs> Hi Lisa. So what when this what this brings to mind is um, you're talking about this these uh, stars when I say stars as in people and you you talk about uh, Beyonce but another one who did something similar was Adele when she had her um, it was like the special that she had it was aired on. I think it was CBS and Oprah was there and Lizzo was there and it was at the um, uh, Griffith uh, uh, Astro um, Astronomy Building, mm -hmm. the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. And mm -hmm. that's where she had her. And while she's singing and doing all this, and of course she's wearing what? Saturn earrings. Mm -hmm. So there's always something that if, for those who can see and know, I mean, she sang beautifully, of course. And um, and I was like, oh, I'm peeping those earrings, Miss Adele. Like, what are you into now? But, you know, they're probably all into it some kind of way. So no, this they, is they very, all, very on point. They all do it, right? Because it's bigger than what Kanye was talking about, who runs the industry. It goes even deeper than that. That part I'm not going to get into, you know, here. Um, that's going to be for, like I said, a private video that I'm going to make, but it goes a lot deeper, but, but this goes all the way back through all the major religions on that we're dealing with right now. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism are somehow, especially Judaism specifically, um, are very much tied into Saturnic worship. Okay. Um, even down to like in Mecca. They have a cube in Mecca. It's a black cube at the center that, you know, it's like a holy practice for when you go to visit Mecca for them, <clears throat> for people to walk around this cube, like in a concentric, like in a circle, but going in counterclockwise. This is the same way that the cube at the, I'm sorry, that the, that the, you know, the things around Saturn at the top, like the little storm that's around the cube that's on top of Saturn, it moves the same way, counterclockwise. Now it's a clock, right? So we're saying clockwise, Saturn being Kronos, being the father of time, time being the illusion that keeps us trapped into the earth. I'm gonna get, in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into it in just a second, you guys, and, 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 and tell you what I basically, came up with on how they're actually doing this. And I'm not saying this is the only way, but I really feel as though that this is true. Okay. So the whole idea is about the time. Now going back to, shoot, let me just jump into it. So going back to 
um, all these celebrities, you know what I'm saying? All these things that they're doing, all these sacrifices, Saturn requires that because it's a, it's a planet of, you know what I'm saying? Of harshness, of um, capitalism, right? Um, the Roman empire before they became a Christian nation, quote unquote, they were worshiping Saturn, the bull. This is where you get the red bull from, you know, the bull, like um, the bulls football team. And you get like Michael Jordan, Air Jordans, right? These are the bull with the wings. These are symbols of Saturn. It's everywhere. You guys like they literally select people from different bloodlines. They know who people are when they're born and when they come onto the earth and they know exactly what they're going to be doing. Okay. So while like Madonna was it for a while and then um, someone like, you know, Adele and different people, like they interchange and all the, the, the celebrities are doing this. But right now that person has been for the longest time has been Beyonce. She was selected. And so she's always, you can look at multiple pictures of her. I mean, throughout the, throughout the years where she's constantly in a halo and she actually has a song called halo there. See what happened is with the patriarchal society, see, we think when we're dealing with patriarchy, we're dealing with race where, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, old white men created patriarchy on the earth. No patriarchy are we're patriarchy got flipped from a cosmic perspective. So even before white people rule the earth, black people were practicing patriarchy as well. Okay. Because the, the patriarchy got hijacked and began on the planet of Saturn. That's where it began. However, they know that earth is a feminine planet, right? Which means that it's not harsh. It's the opposite that is led from the heart center, which is basically the connection in your body represents the, the connection between your upper three chakras and your lower three chakras, which those are an upward facing triangle and a downward facing triangle. And when you merge those two triangles together, then you're going to get that um, hexagon, hexagram, which is the cube. Okay, <laughs> man, this stuff gets so deep. Like this is the same cube that you will find at CERN. This is the same cube that you will see that's in um, the movie um, with um, Avengers, the first one with Samuel Jackson. It is the cube that they put inside of the middle of the tesseract. I'm sorry, they use a tesseract, which is the cube. It's a hyperdimensional cube that goes inside of the eight pointed star. Again, which is the eight is a number that represents the cube that represents Saturn that goes inside of, um, you know what I'm saying? Of that, um, this Hadron Collider to power it up, to create from going from one dimension to the next. So if we know that we only have number one, numbers only go from one to nine, okay? And it's the same way when you're dealing with gematria, which are the, the letters, which is basically a Jewish, um, you know, numerical system by, that assigns numbers to letters, okay? You deal with one through nine. So nine represents completion. Eight represents financial wealth, right? Which is what we, the materialism basically, right? But the eight is the loop, the infinity loop that's turned up on its side. It is the circle. It is the, the Ouroboros that's eating its own tail. You know what I'm saying? I, I want you guys to raise your hands and come on stage because I don't want to get, you know what I'm saying, um, too far and um, not answer any questions as I go along the way. Okay. So when these rituals are taking place and you ask and you got, you guys are asking yourselves, Oh, what you know what I'm saying? They, these are Saturnian rituals that they're doing. Um, to go back to Rome, Saturn, that used to be Saturnia. They used to, they practice, they adapted this particular ritual called Saturnalia that began on this, on the 17th of December each year. Um, that was at, after Rome had gotten taken over, um, had lost the war, I think to the Carthaginians, I believe, um, you know, the morale of the country was low. So this was the day that they literally flipped everything upside down. They let the slaves actually, not the day, it was like a week celebration. They let the slaves, um, basically, you know what I'm saying? Um, become like the rulers just for that time. And this is when they exchanged gifts and there was lots of food, basically all of that. 
And so this was leading up to the December 25th, which is right after the winter solstice. So this was also a pagan holiday, but it was also a worship to Saturn, okay? So the reason why I'm pointing all this stuff out is because, I, you know what I'm saying? I just want people to know that this whole Saturnian worship is a part of our entire society and we're also giving energy to it when we have no idea of it, what we're looking at. Um, how did December 25th become um, Christmas? Well, um, you know, when the, uh, I think it was um, Constantine, when he, you know, brought forth, you know, um, the Christianity thing, then, and the Romans had to adapt to that, they was going to take away that, those pagan holidays. But the people enjoyed it so much that they gave them the one day, which was the last day of the feast anyway. So it was the 25th. And so that's one of the ways that the December 25th became that day. And they started referring to it as Jesus's birthday. So there is also a reference to Jesus and Saturn. All these things are connected. Okay. Um, any questions before I move on? Nobody have any questions. Okay. So let's get to the matrix itself or, or should I, let me see, let me look at my notes real quick. So this, this cube of Saturn, like I said, if you look around guys, you will see the symbolism everywhere, but you have to see the visual at first so that you can start and know what you're looking at. So obviously, like if you look at the sign, like the the, the car company Saturn um, is one. There's lots of them. They're in all of the different ones. Bentley is one because the wings also represent Saturn as well. Now, <clears throat> let me get into the, I was talking about the, the two pillars, okay? The two pillars and the black and white floor. So the black and white represents duality, okay? And so and it also represents good and evil. So this particular dimension that we're in, the third dimension, it experiences duality because of the frequency um, where we're experiencing matter, which is everything being so dense that we can actually feel it versus when we were in a higher dimension, we would be able to have more telepathic experiences where we may not have to have talk so much. We could probably, you know, disappear in one place and appear in somewhere else that we had a higher dimension that we lived in. Okay. But Saturn, the ruler, this, this, this Saturnic energy took over all of that. Now the, I have, um, studied the Kabbalah, right? The Kabbalistic tree of life. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a deep study, but I'm, I've studied it off and on for years. Okay. Just for my own inner understanding and nothing else, not to reteach it to anybody in any way like that, but just for my own inner understanding, because this is all the information I've gathered has always been based upon the things that I want to know and from further elevation in my own internal journey, my own internal soul. Okay. Um, so on the tree of life, you have two pillars, right? Which you often see these pillars depicted in Masonic symbolism. Okay. Even in your square and compass in the middle of that is a cube. That's the cube of Saturn. It's represented literally everywhere. You know what I'm saying? That you guys can look and find it. Um, and so, um, these twin pillars represents the duality as Boaz and Joachim. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Joachim, jo this Jaquin is pronounced differently by some people and it's written differently as well. But the, you know, the, th the only thing you need to know is that those two twin pillars, okay? Those two twin pillars represent duality. That's what it represents on the earth, okay? And so that means, what does duality mean? That means that you will never achieve perfection, right? That no matter what happens, no matter how, whatever your efforts are, that, you know what I'm saying? Like the propensity for something that's unfavorable to happen will happen. That's one thing for sure. It's going to happen. So it doesn't matter what you do. Someone is going to get hurt. Someone, you know what I'm saying? Mate will die. That's going to happen. You're going to die and you're going to live. That's the, 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 the duality. Okay. So 
what's happening is that's how the planet is run. Now, here's what I figured out. Let's get back to Saturn and these rings. Why are these rings important? Those rings are important. Now, there was a time, according to my research, that Saturn did not have any rings at all and that Saturn was the sun of the earth, okay? Saturn was the sun, not the sun that we have now. Keep in mind that Saturn is extreme, it's the furthest planet away from the sun. So the sun does not um, give Saturn any energy, okay? Saturn generates its own energy and supposedly it's supposed to have a center that is filled with ice. Um, you know, pe people will say, you know, otherwise it actually has a crystal inside of it, the crystal core that, um, you know, we don't have, that's unfamiliar to our planet. Okay. Now somebody allegedly, um, are building these rings around Saturn as a satellite to send our frequencies. Now, if you guys know that crystals um if you work with crystals and you use crystals crystals are programmable okay so it would make sense to me that they have a um a crystal inside of this okay that and it's some sort of an outpost if you know like um if you've read like um anything about the sumerians and the anunnaki's and all of this the emerald tablets um you will not that's i'm sorry emerald tablets or thoth the other one um at any rate you know when the naburians were quote unquote mining go on earth they had a um, mars as an outpost so you know you can't think of these plants as just sitting out there just because we don't know that they're inhabited doesn't make that it's not inhabited or have inhabitable you know what I'm saying, capabilities, okay? We don't know because we haven't been out there. We can only intuit these things are going to like our astral dreams and astral plane to see, you know, what we can figure out, okay? And just if you're able to channel and channel some things. So now when you have these rings that they're saying that wasn't always there, now is it what is it that they were not always there or we didn't have the equipment to see them? Um, it could be either or. However, the rings of Saturn were not always, um, you know, there for people to to look at. Okay. Um, now, I will say this: the whole idea of the rings is that Saturn and the rings, quote unquote, makes a sound. So the NASA, which you know what I'm saying, you got to take anything that NASA is saying with a grain of salt. Okay, because if you know NASA's roots and its history, you know what I'm saying, it's not from the best place. I don't feel like they're the most trustworthy. However, they sent a Cassini spacecraft out there to um, pick up the sounds of Saturn, and Saturn actually makes a sound. So they have this on YouTube. You can go on YouTube and look it up, sounds of Saturn. And so it has a particular sound that comes off of it, which is a frequency, okay? Everything that we do down here, we're like, you know, we're always talking about frequencies and sounds and elf waves and, you know, the earth has its own heartbeat and, you know, all this, that, and the third. Even when <laughs> you get, before I move forward with that, even when we're talking about the 440 hertz, how they change the earth's heartbeat is more in alignment with the 432 hertz, which is on the frequency of love, healing, DNA activation, all those things. And they change that to 440 hertz. Well, 440 resonates on the number eight. That is Saturn. That is that infinity loop that keeps you trapped in time. Is everybody tracking with me? Let, oh, I see a whole bunch of people on the stage. Let me go ahead and pause right there because I've been talking for a little while. I've been try trying to put out all the information, but I don't want to overload you guys either. So let me pause right there and see does anybody um, want to tap in really quick with any questions or comments? I just listened to this sound and it sound like screaming. Is that the same thing you you heard, Lisa? I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. So the interesting part about it, it does sound like a frequency, that, but the frequency sounds distorted to me. I don't know. I would say it sounds like screaming, but it sounds distorted to me. 
But I'm going to blow y'all mind in a heartbeat. In a minute, I'm about to blow y'all mind. Because this blew my mind when I made the connection. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, so let's just go there. Um, There was, and this is how I put this together myself. Because when I learned that Saturn made this sound, I went and listened to it on YouTube. Um, There was like another video that had something about it was a news. It was like a mainstream media news clip. Okay. And they said that when they, when the twin towers, keep in mind, twin Lord of the Rings. Remember the second one is the, 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 um, something, it's something about some twin towers. They were in two twin twin towers in the second one. Now, what happened was that Twin Towers represented what people don't realize. Those Twin Towers represented Boaz and Joachim, which is the construct of the matrix. Okay. That's the construct of the matrix. So when they, now that tower was, let me see. That tower was 1300. Those two towers were 1,368 feet in height. Which, if you reduce that down numerologi- numerologically, that's the number nine. Okay. When that they knocked those down, and they built a one world trade center. Okay, w- new world order, one world government, global reset. They're bringing about a new paradigm. The shift from the old Saturn into something new is what they're doing. But they built the one World Trade Center, and I wouldn't have made the connection other than this this news um, clipping that I saw, video that basically said that that building, when it was still being constructed, was making sounds, and it was playing the sounds, and the sound sounded like the sound on Saturn, y'all. This was happening in New York City, and so basically, what's taking place is a signal from Saturn is I'm pretty sure they sent it to multiple different places on earth, but I believe that one of the main places that they send it to is that for whatever grid line that's on, whatever ley line that's on, it's going straight to New York city. And then that frequency is being, that's a frequency band. That is the matrix. You can't see it. Isn't that what, isn't that what, um, Morpheus told (laughs) you what I'm saying? It's a matrix of the mind. But you can't see it. Our matrix is, it's numbers, but it's also frequencies. It's cymatics. And that's the big drop. That's the big drop right there. That Saturn is sending signals down here to Earth. And that's sending out a frequency band, which is probably also responsible for the Van Allen belt. And, um us not being able to get beyond that because it's a radiation belt that's around the earth. I believe that is a part of the actual physical matrix that we are living in. And with that, I'm going to go on mute and I'll open up the floor, guys. Questions? I have, I have a question, Lisa. This is Ether. I love this room and really appreciate the way you're breaking everything down. And I'm thinking about the frequency and um At first, when you were talking about, you know, the counterclockwise rotations around the cube and all of the worship through logos and sending all of that energy, I was just thinking, like, how how does it receive, you know, what what are are there intermediary like transmitters that are like in in this equation that that like funnel that energy to the Saturn to feed that um you know, whatever that like that thing, the pull, the 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 the, the storm counterclockwise pull the energy um, and on the pull, etc. But then when we started talking about the frequency, I was thinking like, okay, so I wonder if it's the emanation of the frequency here is mirroring the the frequency of Saturn and like the perpetuation of that is almost creating. And then when you said Van Ellen Bell, I was like, oh, perhaps it's 
it's an attempt to create a mirror image of Saturn, like to turn Gaia into another Saturn or something like that. And then I was thinking about what is it, because I always think about the the cosmology and the, the orientation of the planets and the constellations and the mythologies that come from there. I think there's a lot of information. And I saw something about um, Uranus and Gaia and Saturn and that story and how there was something going on there. And I was wondering if you knew anything about that. And so, um, yeah, I'm just really engaged with this topic. So thank you. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. So I think because our um, environment that we deal with is sound and frequencies, that we are actually antennas as well, right? And so like when you can feel someone else's vibe and you know what I'm saying, your frequency is high or your vibe is high and low, I think that, um, you know, there's, that's also taking place as well. Now, when we get more connected with nature and with the sun, then that helps us to keep, and through meditation and spiritual practices, right? We are counteracting that. Some of us weren't born into this hive mind. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because the Saturn control mechanism is a hive mind. Now you ask about, um, Jupiter, you didn't ask about Jupiter, but you said Uranus and Gaia. So Gaia is Saturn's mother in mythology, right? And so she's older than him, which means that that's a feminine energy. So that feminine, Earth is a feminine planet. So that feminine energy was usurped and he took over. But the energy was supposed to, the, the rulership was supposed to be passed on to his last son, who his mother did not... Um, who he hit, you know, Saturn ate all his kids, right? And so she hid the last kid from him, which is Jupiter. So Jupiter and Uranus and um, Pluto, which they're saying Pluto is not a planet, it's never been a planet, but those three planets are further out that like they're, they're like outside of the band of, or the, the, the radiation band is they're outside of the loop of time. The asteroid belt. They're outside right. of the asteroid belt. Right. They're outside of the loop of the time construct of the matrix that we live in. Right. And so when you're dealing with the eight, like I keep talking about the eight, which is the cube, which is the tesseract, um, that is the matrix in and of itself. Okay. And there is a, a dot, a middle point that is like the way that you get out of there after you transition. Um, but when you're, you know, Nikola Tesla said, if you understand the mystery of the three, the six and the nine, then, or I'm paraphrasing, then you understand the mysteries of the universe. Okay. So the three, the six and the nine is what stands outside of the, the number eight, because the nine represents completion. But if you go three, six, and then nine is three, six, nine, you know what I'm saying? Nine is div divisible by itself, no matter how many times you take nine and divide it, you know what I'm saying? Multiply it up and up and up and up. It's always going to be divisible, you know what I'm saying? By three and by itself. So that's a code that's outside of the matrix. The eight, the infinity loop is the matrix in and of itself. And that is the energy that's governing the planet with Saturn. I Can I ask? Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. Good How are you doing? Would you like to chime in? I would, but I think there was a woman that wanted to say something. Oh, it's okay. Her. I had one more question just because of what you said, Lisa. Um, maybe I'll just ask quickly. Thank you before I forget. Um, so the, the resonance of the 440 that's aligned with the frequency of Saturn, the, the, the way that the, the base um, systems are set up mathematically, the, 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 the time and everything kind of keeps the, okay, like the looping, I understand. So does that, so when, like you said in the beginning of what you were saying, um, when we understand we're not born in the hive mind mentality and we have a knowing, an inner knowing and uh, a propensity to continuously um, go to the natural uh, frequencies that are aligned with something something else for, um, for, for, what is it? 432. Um, um, 
So does this... right because when you add up four, three, and two, you get nine. Right. Like... So does this um, when we stay on course like that throughout our life experience here and instill that information in our soul? Um, does it have something to do with like after leaving this incarnation? Is it is it the frequency for our soul to continue on to a next spiraling um, realm or is it like if we don't if, if we're stuck in that frequency of discordance that's matching with Saturn to keep everything in the loop does the soul just get recycled is it for our soul or like what is it for that's a really great question because that's the thing when you if we are choosing um, to come to this planet to have an experience. And there was a time, I think a lot of people have just been trapped in the, in the, um, the loop of uh, reincarnation. That's the thing. When they say, you know, when you die to go back into the light, they program this into you from television, right? It is not the light that you go back into because the light is Saturn, where you go back to Saturn and your soul gets reincarnated. It gets put into a new baby body and then you start all over again. So like, you know, most people come here and, you know, little children, they have, they may have memories depending on how, you know, um, old their soul is. They may have memories of, you know, previous lives or, and things of that nature, but very quickly, you know, it is, um, you know, programmed out of them, right? They put a box in front of them, a, a, you know, TV, now it's iPads and phones and things of that nature, but it's some sort of a you know, um, apparatus that's, is, is, is programming everybody. Right. And so the, the hive mind is what you learn from grade one through 12. And if your parents are already programmed, they're just teaching you what they already know. And then if you, you have, you know, what I'm saying the, um, the ability to have original thought and to think critically, then you're usually called like the black sheep of the family, right? Cause nobody believes you. <laughs> so no, it is your soul's journey. And it is the work of your soul. We all come here to do that. We all come here to have this experience here on earth, but we're not meant to keep continuously, um, you know, reincarnated on earth in this prison planet over and over again. Most people don't even realize this is a planet. It's like the Truman Show. <laughs> Remember the Truman Show? It's like that. So it depends on how far you're able to spiritually, um, you know, um, advance in your own personal journey. But just imagine you know, um, a, a mass awakening, what that would do to the actual frequency of the planet. That would actually counteract the matrix in and of itself, because then there would be some sort of opposing high frequency energy that could, would drown out the sounds coming from Saturn that they're sending to earth. You know, if you look at the top of the one world trade center, there's like a, um, you know, like an antenna, it's like a spire. So it looks like it's receiving something. All of the you know, um, old buildings, if you, you know, people, the flat earthers that were watching, you know, like those, um, old, um, what, like the 1800s, 1700s, when all those, when they had light before light, before we had light, you know, those buildings were built on forts and water and it was, um, based upon cymatics. So there was a time when, you know what I mean? That, uh, we were tapping into these things and the, the power was there. So, you know, it's just the consciousness of the people have gone down to basically a monkey brain, you know what I mean? And so that is the state of control. Um, this is why they're going through, they know that the era is up, we're entering into a new age and that rule of Saturn is, you know what I'm saying, is not as strong as it was anymore. But this is what, even at the bottom, I, I spoke about the, the hexagon the hexagram that was at the top, uh, which is a cube, a uh, flattened out cube that's on the top of Saturn on the, on the North Pole. But on the, the South bottom pole, is the South Pole. The, the South, South Pole, pole has, a, the has a storm that, no, the, it's the North Pole that has the hexagram. Are you sure? And the, I'm positive. Okay. And the South Pole has, um, you know how like when we get like uh, storms, like hurricanes and stuff, and they always say the eye of the storm. Well, there's a storm at the bottom of the South Pole of Saturn that looks like um, an eye in the middle of it, right? So just go look at it. Just go look it up and you'll see it for yourselves. But it um, in ancient times, Saturn was always represented by an eye. So this is why you'll see, you know, um, these people covering one eye, 
you know, in Hollywood, this obsession with the, you know, with the pyramid, with the eye, these are all, they're all paying homage to the God that they serve of Saturn, which is why they have been granted all the riches and all the things that they have been given. This is what's going on. This is what's going on. So you gotta pay attention to these cubes that are all over and there's the Saturn um, symbolism that is all throughout society. And like I said, I'm going to put a video together for the, um, for Patreon with visuals so that, you know, the people that are in there can see it. And then I'm going to also add the religious aspect of this because it gets very dark. <laughs> it gets even darker than this. It really I stand does. corrected and I appreciate you for that. I stand corrected. Thank you. Hey Lisa, I wanted to wake something up too, um, uh, as it relates to, uh, what they call the great white spot that you really are speaking of when you talk about that eye, um, where it says that uh, Saturn has a seasonal storm, also known as this great white spot that kicks up water vapor and other materials up to as deep as 100 miles or 160 kilometers below the cloud tops. And then it talks about the vortex is believed to be a special spot, which is that same thing where energy is either entering into the earth or projecting out of the earth. Vortexes or vortexes are found at sacred sites throughout the world, like the Great Pyramid of Egypt and other places, uh, Stonehenge, Valley, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Rock in Australia, there's a place in Peru. So, and then when it, it goes on to say Saturn is about maturity, responsibility, discipline, and stewardship, I don't know uh, what that has to do with it, but I just found that interesting as, as it relates to that uh, great white spot. I yield. Greetings, Saru, and peace, Lisa, how everyone is doing? Let's go deep on this real quick with this whole Saturn. We already know Saturn is a duality, right? It's feminine and masculine in nature. So Saturn, if you look at Saturn, it also goes, of course, into the Roman numbers X, because X equals time. Time is when we get also like we serving time. This is a this could be this prison. Are, are you are you sure planet. about that? Because X represents yes. the feminine um aspect, no. right? And so right. right, and the feminine energy stands outside of time. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what that's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm getting trying to get into too. Like with the binary numbers. Binary is what matrix? It's zero ones and ones and zeros. That's ten. Zeros for feminine. One is for masculine. Right? So when we look at these numbers, we already know we're we're part of this binary system through our codes, our through our DNA. Because we also have sacred geometry within the body. So I remember you said earlier about how Saturn is a co-planet as well. When you said that, I was thinking about Sub-Zero and the Scorpio, right? Because Scorpio represented the element of fire. Sub-Zero represented the element of water. That also goes into the six-pointed star because the six-pointed star is the element of water. I mean, the element of fire and water, right? So Scorpio also is represented by the death card, the number 13 card in the Torah. The Scorpio is ruled by Mars, which is why Sub-Zero represented that fire, because who also is governed by Mars? It's the Aries, the element of fire. So you have these two elements of water and fire, right? Hot and cold, cold and hot. And we already know that it's a binary system, which you're part of this whole binary matrix. See, when we get the fact of the matter is that how this could be a prison planet, but within the prison planet, you'll find also your prism is when you extend and expand your consciousness because that's how you find your way out. Remember, this is a sentence, right? Is this your death sentence or your life sentence, right? So this is when you talk about the number eight, the number eight goes into the Ouroboros is death and rebirth, right? It's just like the death card, same representation. So- And that's cat, that's cat, that's cat. My personal opinion like, is this lies, that's bullshit. No, let me finish. Nah, why is that bullshit? That's not because bullshit. Let Muslims worship around a cube of Saturn 
And I tell you why the parameters of the cube. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to hear what you're Let me finish. I'm not I trying know, to hear life, what you're Let him finish. Let him, let him, let him finish. finish. Let him land his plane. Shut him up, bro. Let no, me finish. Okay? So when you think like that, it goes, I must have went over your mind, and that's okay. So when we go and we put all this together, okay, everything, is rela- everything relates to one another. Just like I said, this could be a prison planet or a prison planet. What is prism? It means light, right? What does Saturn also represent? Light. Lisa said it earlier. Don't go to that light. But remember, if you are no, dark, it, no, it doesn't. No, it, no, it out, doesn't. Let me finish, bro. When you come out, the, when you come out the womb, that's darkness. You're already in a light body, right? So when we go into this minute physics, because this is what it is. Think about this. Saturn represents time. That means you're running out of time or you're you're being what? Sentenced to death. You have to go through the death to find your rebirth. Okay? That's expanding your consciousness. That's how you evolve through the mind. Your mind's eye through prison. Are you done? Being in a prison. You know, are you through done? The mind, right? Because this is the prison. Yes. No, I'm not done. Nobody- Wait a minute, who the hell is speaking? First of all, you, you, you're not going to come up on my stage, okay, and be disrespectful. I am recording this. Exactly. Um, pardon me, I'm I recording... respect you, Lisa. Pardon me, I was wilding. Okay. Pardon me. So you need to behave accordingly, because you're a grown yes, man, ma'am. and we're all grown yes, people ma'am. here, and y'all already know that in the Matrix Unveil, we are respectful to one another, and we just come in here and we build. I already laid the foundation Let's build on it. Allow him to finish his point, and then you can chime in. Okay, All right, please yeah, don't disrespect. Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. So, hey, see, let me lose my channel dot. You know what I'm saying? So, think about this: the Death Star. What is the Death Star? The Death Star also had an eye within the Death Star because what does that eye represent? Saturn. Okay. Saturn is represented by Darth Vader. Star Wars is not. Just a movie, it's a documentary, just like the Matrix is a documentary. When you're able to put all this together, it comes together as one, right? You being the Neo coming out the Matrix out of the death sentence to be rebirth like Christ. Because Prism is also Christ. Alanda. Okay, go ahead, life. You got it. All right, cool. Look, my guy, I don't, I don't agree with anything that he said. Aztec, I think you're deceiving the people, and that's not thing. It's not a dig on your your personality and how you, what you see things. Life, life. Let me tell you something you about Saturn, much, my bro. guy. You yeah, I give you multiple multiple frames of references when when talking about Saturn. Yeah, the cube. Okay, Saturn has a hexagon. Hexagon is a polygon shape. Polygon shapes are made up of ninety degree angles on each side. So, a hexagon specifically. Can you say what a hexagon is constituted of? Yes, no? so a, a hexagon... No, 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 Lisa, I'm, I'm talking to an Aztec, though. No, but you don't talk to me oh, because he, uh, he was talking about something else. You're, no, you're it's, now it's, challenging it's the, same reference. the information that I put out. Because if you take... Do you understand the difference between a two-dimensional, um, you know, um, object and a... Um, a, a three-dimensional. Yeah, check, check, so check this out. So right. So if you if a two-dimensional is flat, right, the one dimension is just one line that goes straight across. When you start to make angles, now you're looking at two dimensions, right? But when you take it um, into a shape outside that's not on the paper, it's now a, something that you could touch in real life. Then that is a three-dimensional thing that we're looking at. So the this is not even something that you can argue with me. <laughs> a hexagon is literally a cube, okay? It is cube. It has eight sides. And it is, a cube has eight sides. It is a tesseract. So if uh, that's not, you can go Google that and then come back um, and look at the, the pictures and all of that. But that is not even up for debate, honestly. That's all right. But so, is it a okay, six so That's, with that's hexag- basic information. Can I ask you a question real quick? Can I ask a question? Like, no, I'm going to say what I'm saying know. before you talk anyway. You know what I'm saying? Look, so oh, right, any any right. any platonic solid, right? Any platonic solid, right? Your phone is an obelisk, okay? If you watch them, I'm, t- I'm trying to give you real-time references, right? So I don't sound schizo. 
real time reference, your phone that you're holding, everybody, your iPad, your phone is a platonic solid. It has four angles around it, the four corners of the earth, the four elements, earth, fire, water, air, and the conduit of, of, of uh, is, is your energy, is your, your life essence that you speak into. This is why these apps like Clubhouse is utilizing these things, right? And I'm not, I'm not trying to go off on a tangent here. It's talking about Saturn, the cube, right? Muslims pray around the cube, right? The cube is like, you know, modern science or mathematical formula will say, hey, you know, 2,160 degrees isn't a perfect cube, but it is, right? If obtuse, acute angles, obtuse angles, it has to be fitting with 180 degrees, which one plus eight is a root nine number. I'm not here to fucking lie to you people. I'm not here to, to chat shit or, oh, I'm holding the vowel. Language. Lab coat, did you have something to say? I do have something to say. I was being patient. Oh, Go for I'm sorry it. Go about for it. I thought I, I thought I was off mute. I definitely packed him up and moved him out the room because he does occasionally come in here and try to, you know, derail the conversation. Um, we're not debating what's a cube and a hexagram, okay? Because it's it's just science. You could just go look it up. It's on Google. Just Google it. That's it. So unless we're, you're going to build on the conversation that we're having, please don't derail the conversation. You don't have to agree with everything, but we're not going to argue about right angles and left angles. That's be, that's not within the scope of what we're talking about, you know, because um, I've already, you, I know what a cube is and I know what the hexagon is and countless numbers of people um, and science, right, <laughs> agrees with this. So let's just keep moving on. Who wanted to go next? Lab code. I'm I definitely looked that up though. I never knew that though. Wants to go next when I'm when I when I can be heard. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, first I want to say, Lisa, I appreciate you. I see you strong in this mama jammer. And I appreciate you. Thank you for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to speak. And I love all of you. You know? Um I appreciate this conversation with Saturn because I identify and I hear there's a lot. I learned something in this conversation with this white storm. And I also want to give respect to Aztec because he's touching on some things that uh, I identify with, like from my experiences, if you had ears to hear. Um, I'm not trying. I just met this man, whatever the case may be, boom and pop. But I would like to say that um, astrologically speaking, that Saturn is about responsibility and about being respectful. And I like what the brother who you just kicked out the room at the same time, where he said something, he said all these apps and the phone is a rectangle and a square, like that's the law of Saturn. And it was, it's through this conversation that I recognize that we call Saturn um, the father. But if we look at the element of Saturn, it's a feminine energy. It's a, it's a, it's a, the element of Capricorn which is the house of Saturn, that's his house or her house. I think I would like to make it and call it something different instead of the father. I'd like to call it the grandmother. And I would like to give respect to all the women because they're the only ones that can create life, boom, bam, pop. And I think the rib story is a bunch of bullshit and you can unblock me, that's fine. Fun, follow me, whatever. Um, but I like this conversation because y'all start touching upon things and we start touching uh, upon um, the cycle of Saturn in its transit and giving respect and authority because that's what Saturn is. And we can see this by the hexagram and the hexagram shape is two triangles and that white cloud, because I'm looking, I pulled up a website actually. Um, if you go to, uh, uh, what's this website? Saturn's hexagram, hexagon in motion. Um, I've always appreciated you, Lisa, for bringing the truth seriously. And you showed me something, so I need to pay attention. Yeah, but all you guys got to do right now is, okay. um, look, and it, everything didn't fit into my PTR, but it gives you a good idea of what I mean when I'm saying that that hexagram is a four, when it's because it's just a flattened out, it's a two dimensional representation of an eight sided shape, right? Right. But when you take that two dimensional, 
object, right, representation and make it into a three dimensional. This is what it actually looks like, which is the cube that you all used to draw when you were in school. Right. Did you put two boxes together. Remember, you draw one box and you draw another box overlay and at the bottom right corner and then you join them together. You get this four dimensional cube that is. Um, and then you get the, the hypercube, which is a test rack, was, which is a cube inside of that cube right there. So that is a hexagram. So we're not arguing about that. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. So yes, let's move on to, you know, Saturn and, you know, Saturn being a, um, you know, how Saturn has a plant, the whole planet locked down and how the rulers are worshiping Saturn. And this is who they, this is the God that they're worshiping and that they're paying homage to and that they're giving up all these um, sacrifices to and all these blood rituals and all these wars and you know all the things that they're doing because this is where they're getting their energy from and i believe that saturn is just an outpost um to a kind of like a command center if you will um to control um the human beings on earth and they show you this like in jupiter ascending right where um the, the people on earth are just being herded and you know harvested for their energy and they had they're none the wiser that this is happening so check as out above so below as above yeah. so below with the herd because just like cows are herded and chickens are herded and cooped you know it's also below here and it's also above as well um are you like can we define dimensions because i feel like people just be saying dimensions like for anything like when you say like four dimensional what do you mean by that like with saturn though I'm just curious. Question. No, me. I mean, do you see my PTR? I didn't get the refresh. So that's that's a third. Yeah, just refresh, right? Okay. So when you have a cube, right? The um, the a side of cube, right? That's a cube. That's the hexagram. Okay. And then when there's a cube inside of the cube, that's the that represents the fourth dimension, which is the tesseract. And you guys can actually go look that up. It's the tesseract mm -hmm. was in the um, you know, in the Marvel Avengers and also in um um what was it, the um Iron Man, but it is it's in all throughout that whole story. But can you spell that tesseract, please? T E S S E R A C T. Can you spell it a little bit slower? I'm I'm Googling. Okay, I'm, -E listen, I'm not gonna slow down, bro. I'm gonna need you to, you know what I'm saying, be a little okay. quick on the uptake. T E S S, because this is not a class, I charge for those. T E S S E R A C T, the Tesseract. Okay. Thank you. And that's an, actually a real thing in real life, you know what I'm saying? And um, I did a whole class on 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 um, quantum jumping, how you could do it. So that's helping you to get into the quantum realm. Now, do you so see the, how the, that tesseract? Do you see how that tesseract is a trap? Okay, I need. Let's move on. Anybody else want to chime in? Anyone questions, comments? Let's go. Hey, Lisa. Yeah, I wanted to um, tell you I like that you mentioned about the frequency with the tower how it feeds signal to Saturn and vice versa, because I always wondered why they made the memorial area into these 70 foot pits. And there's like a big fountain on both sides of the um, where the towers used to be. And I used to watch this show called The Magicians. And in that show, the towers, I mean, the fountains were actual portals to different areas. So I can see how souls can be flowing through there. Exactly. And what I was told that at ground zero, I think it's a subway station that's near like that um, One World Trade Center um, that has like if you go in there, like there is a big eye like on the floor, which is paying homage to Saturn. And then there's eyes, you know, around the the um like that circle that, you know, so it's everywhere. You know, what I mean, it's everywhere. And so the, what I'm trying to bring people's minds and attention to and I don't want you all to lose sight of that is you know, don't believe what I tell you. That's why I have the discord. And for the members that are there, I put receipt upon receipt. They're all, everything I'm talking about is the, the, the visual dep depictions are there. And like I said, I'm going to make a video where we get into the religious aspect of this, because it's quite sinister. If you ask me, this goes all the way back to Babylonian times. And it goes back to these, um, 13 bloodlines and one particular bloodline who basically usurp themselves into this Saturn worshiping has the whole world worshiping Saturn. And how this applies to you to this day, because these are the same people that had slavery going. Okay. I'm just saying, all right. If there's a thing called 
in Judaism, there is, you will notice some, uh, I, I'm not sure if they're Orthodox Jews or they're Zionist Jews. I'm not sure which part of the, um, the faith that they practice that who um, they practice that do this, but it's a thing called a Teflon. It's an actual black cube, right? That's strapped on to the, like right where your third eye would be. And this is a part of their religious practices. So this is not even something I'm making up. And then if you look at it, those things cost about $500 because of particular, um, one goes on the arm, but the one that is visible is on the head. And it's four pieces of parchment paper with four different scriptures that are written in there. And they have to be written uh, with no mistakes. And so this is done, you know what I'm saying? People are purchasing them and this is what they use as a part of their religious practice. But this is an O to Saturn, right? Why are the Islamic people, um, you know what I'm saying, um, walking in, 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 in um, counterclockwise around and worshiping a freaking cube? Does that, is that not alarming to anybody? D does anybody think this is normal? I'm just asking. Mm, no. Well, that's been the tradition for, for a long time. So it's kind of like they're sticking to that tradition, you know? It's more traditional than than anything for them. Um, I don't know if it's that or a spell. Well, I would just say this. If you look and see who's doing these things and who's flourishing on this earth and who's not doing them and who's on the bottom, then, you know, that may start to, you know what I'm saying? They <laughs> open up. That part. Exactly. And I, that, like I said, the rest of the stuff is going to be for the private. But um, you see the piece here that I put up there. So this is what is taking place. So just start paying attention to these swoops like Saturn, the Nike swoop, um, the IO. Um, it's, it's everywhere. The cube, it's in like they, they put the cube. It's the cube, the halo. Um, the wings and um, the cube, the halo, the wings. Yeah, those are, those are, and the, and the infinity symbol, those are all symbols and the one eye. That's the other one I was looking for. And the one eye symbol that's on the top of your dollar bill. These are all Saturnic symbolism. Okay. It's all Saturnic symbolism. And so when we're talking about <clears throat> the matrix in and of itself, if you really truly believe that you live in some sort of a constructed, universe then you know what i mean then i'm offering you a probability of what this could be it could be something else i don't know i'm just exploring and so this is you know i'm i'm offering this as a possibility of what is taking place because we know that they're utilizing music that they change the frequency of music um to the 440 standard off of the 432 hertz standard. and this was the tuning of um of musical instruments when we still were using instruments. Now people are using machines, right? Artificial intelligence. So why is this important? Now, I believe that there's a changing of the old guard into the new guard, which is going into from the, the twins, okay? From the, the dualistic, they knocked down the towers of Boaz and Joachim, the, 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 the towers that you know what I'm saying? The pillars, the two pillars that were, that holds up the contracts of the matrix on the Kabbalistic tree of life. And when did they do that? I feel that what happened with the whole George Floyd was a big ass ritual. And I didn't know why they were performing that ritual until now. And so I believe that that ritual was a twin ritual that you know what I'm saying, that they were doing to close out an end of an era, okay? Because it happened where in Minneapolis, which is known as the Twin Cities, um, George Floyd was a Gemini. And then there was um, another guy, he worked at this guy that he's an NF, uh, I think is NBA or something like that, some sort of professional athlete, Steven something another, he, that claimed that he, you know, that they always said that they look like twins, right? So he had a twin, you know, quote unquote, twin cities, Gemini represents the twin, right? So that twin energy, they were killing that twin energy and they had the whole world celebrating that. This is to bring about artificial intelligence and to bring about the one world government, the global reset and um, the singularity, okay? This is what I believe.
but that's my opinion. The floor is open, guys. If anybody wants to chime in, if you, you know, I anything. Have a question. Lisa, I have a question. This is Ether. Um, so because the energy stream, the current um, feeding uh, this relationship between the matrix and the construct of the matrix and Saturn energy, because that current is so strong, um, but there are some of us that uh, are not born into the hive mind mentality. Do you think that there could be a way to um, dip into the stream to utilize some of the energy alchemized to transform it for the betterment of, oh my gosh, you know, I'm looking at my outlet on my lamp here and there's like a hexagon with an arrow going around it clockwise. <laughs> that is so crazy. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Because see, once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? Once you know, you can't unknow it. But no, that's a really, really, really good question, right? Because, you know, if self mastery and is about you, if mass, because see, we are the earth, we are the universe. Each one of our bodies are, are in and of itself a world of its own. You understand? So once once these other our worlds, which is us, are being controlled, they they're able to control everybody, right? And it's through your soul, your Merkaba, the Metatron's cube, right? Which is what they're utilizing, that energy of Metatron's cube. And so you are supposed to be able to master this reality. And so if that means that when they are they are doing their rituals on their ritual days then you should be doing a ritual for yourself to counteract whatever they are doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not even so that you're going against the counteract it, but tap into the energy stream for yourself and make it your own. Make it mean what you want it to mean because now you're taking their energy source away from them. It's like when you go to arena, why do you think the arenas are built the way that they are? Right? They built that way because that the is Coliseum. harvest energy. Exactly. So when you go, it's the same thing with churches and um, and cathedrals and places like this where you see them. I don't like to be uh, in those places because I know that they're energy harvesting, okay? And so a lot of you guys may not like a lot of crowds and you don't even know why because you can feel that this, you know, subconsciously, you know that something else, all the people that's there, it's kind of what they did at the... Um, um astro world right with uh what's that rapper's name at the astro cat travis scott right that was a ritual of itself and so if you tie these things in together and then you start to um i'm not a gematria expert <laughs> i don't i don't know much about it beyond you know just going and putting you know certain phrases and names and things like that and seeing the numbers line up in a certain way um, so I'm not the gematria expert, but I'm proficient enough to, to be able to extract some, some sort of meaning out of what's taking place. Now, gematria is also from the Judaism faith, right? From the Kabbalah. Okay. So just keep that in mind as well. But when you start lining up these numbers, line up these ritual days, um, understanding which days are powerful that they utilize. Yes, you can tap into that and make that for your advantage 100 percent. you can do that thank you lisa that's amazing hello everyone hey how's it going how's it going guys how's it going <laughs> um good evening i i wanted to um that's it's you guys are talking about saturn you guys are talking about like the matrix and everything it's kind of cool um you guys know a lot about frequency and things like that. Like, um, do you think it's possible to access the Akashic records? Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Why wouldn't you be able to? Absolutely. Good guys. Good. You guys are amazing. Good. I might find some people I can match the hang with. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it's very nice to meet y'all. My name is Ododayo, um, Ododo Batala and, I am I am a star seed, guys. I'm a star seed. Um, I am somebody who has fully accessed his his um, his akashic records. I understand that I am a Lemurian, a Lemurian, <laughs> as they call themselves. Um, I also understand that I am a Polarian star seed from the system planet system Polaria, uh, Polaris, um, which is the North Pole. 
and which the planet that I come from in that place is called Thuban. It's the planet that surrounds the sun. It's a yellow dwarf sun that surrounds that planet. And um, yeah, I was just wanted to you know, come and share the space and, and um, see how you guys are doing. And um, if I could, you know, learn some things from you guys, maybe I can learn some, you guys can learn some things from me. And yeah, that's it. I just wanted to say hello. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, welcome. We, you know, appreciate you and we welcome you um, into the space. And, you know, if you got here late, you can, pro you, you have until like the morning to go listen to the replays because I am going to be taking them down. Um, so anybody else want to chime in before we continue forward with this whole, um, the Saturn uh, Matrix, Lord of the Rings? Okay, so I want to read an article for you guys, okay? So this one is Saturn, Lord of the Rings. Now, <clears throat> I want you to take note that someone mentioned Star Wars earlier in here. Okay, um, Frank, I think his name is Frank Lucas or whatever his name is that wrote that he is, he has openly admitted that he has deeply studied mythology. Okay, and so nothing in the Star Wars or Star Trek, and that's, a, I know that's a different, you know, producer, different person, writer, but um, all of these, a lot of these movies, they're actually teaching you mythology because you can go back if, if you know what you're looking at and if you study mythology you can see the mythology you can see the symbolism and you can see exactly what a, a story that they're telling you that's apart from you just being <clears throat> excuse me entertained you know by what's taking place on the screen okay so the lord of the rings um th the reason why we have you wedding rings is because of the as an ode to Saturn. The reason why when you graduate and you have on a black robe, um, you know what I'm saying, that is an ode to Saturn. Um, the graduation um, hat that people wear, that's the name for it, I can't remember it, but it's um, that is also a Saturn cube. There's a reason for that, right? And so that tassel that um, <clears throat> hangs down and swings around, you know what I'm saying, that represents the rings of Saturn. Okay, so just so that you know that we are participating in a Saturnic worship without knowing actually what is taking place. So the trilogy, The Lord of the Rings, is an ode to um, to the planet Saturn, to the god Saturn, okay? Um, the, the chief um, uh, <clears throat> antagonist, right, in the movie is who? Anybody remember his name on stage? Darth Vader. Mm -mm, in uh, Lord of the Rings. Oh, the Lord of the Rings, is... Sauron. Sauron. Sounds like, much like Saturn, right? And what was he represented by? An eye. The all-seeing eye. Hello? The all-seeing eye, okay? They put this stuff in your face every day. Now, I will say, this particular extract that I'm reading from is out of one of the books um, from that David Icke wrote. And so I, I'm going to read it, but I don't agree with everything that's, you know, being written here because I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't believe everything I read. I use my own discernment and I extract what I need to know from there. So I'm just going to share this with you guys, but just giving you that disclaimer as well. So Saturn, Lord of the Rings, the reptilian alliance, alliances modus operandi is the first trigger cataclysmic events on a target world or solar system and wipe away the society that was there before. Then reptilians generally genetically engineered a new species that is designed to be tuned into their false reality, their matrix. And the planet is hijacked along with the people's perception. They have done precisely this to Earth and humanity, and their means of doing so are Saturn and the moon. Saturn, the Lord of the Rings, is the master control center. I mean, look at Saturn with all its rings. Saturn is a glamorous broadcasting system and they will eventually find that the rings are full of crystals rather than ice, a type of crystal that we aren't familiar with on Earth. The rings are not natural, and at one time Saturn was a conventional brown dwarf and it had no rings. The technology-obsessed reptilian alliance has constructed them. Um, funnily enough, as I think about it, an insider once told me of a photograph he had seen of a gigantic spacecraft that appeared to be uh, repairing one of Saturn's rings. 
The process is ongoing and they are continuing to construct others. In 2009, NASA announced that the Spitzer Space Telescope had discovered another ring circling Saturn from a distance of some 3.7 million miles and going out to 7.4 billion. Um, it is so big that it would take a billion Earths to fill it. Some scientists say that the debris created Saturn's rings from a dis disintegrated moon. But how would that, um, how would that, how would that form a ring 3.7 million miles away from Saturn that could hold a billion Earths? Saturn's broadcasting system extends throughout the solar system, but the most are not on visible frequencies. So it says Saturn is the Lord of the Rings. And how did J.R.R. Tolkien and film director Peter Jackson symbolize the controlling force in the book and film of that name as a fiery reptilian eye, the eye of Sauron? Saturn is the second biggest planet in the solar system after Jupiter and is, and is, sixth, is the sixth planet from the sun. Its rings and moons make it unique. Saturn is called a gas giant as with Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. Still, it is habitable by very different entities to humans, much closer to its material center. And as with everything, it exists on other, on other ranges of frequency. Mainstream science says that Saturn radiates 2.5 times more energy than it receives from the sun. It generates an unexplainable, constantly spinning six-sided hexagonal wave pattern at its north pole, which rotates in sync with Saturn's recorded radio emissions. A massive, constantly spinning storm system captured at the south pole also looks like an eye. Jupiter and Neptune also generate more heat than they receive. So that's so, you know, Saturn is like the sun pretty much. And they used to be the sun in the old days. That's what they're saying. So Saturn takes more than 29 Earth years to complete a journey around the sun. The planet um, Dark Sun has been known since prehistoric times because it can be seen from Earth, but it was only after development of strong enough telescopes that the rings were able to be seen. So it goes into the Romans and the Saturn connection. I mean, I went over that, um, so I'm not going to get into that any further. Um, then I went into the all C and I, so I'm not going to go into that any further. But there was one thing I wanted to note in this article, and I'm I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling, okay? So it says Saturn moon equals the queen bee. Hello? Anyone? <laughs> Anybody? Boom. Else? Okay? So when I'm telling y'all that they are utilizing, I didn't know why, where they was channeling this energy through her from, but now I know it's Saturn, especially with this, all the Saturn symbolism around Beyonce, okay? And that is the queen bee, okay? So the queen bee, which is a Saturn moon broadcast, the waveform information hack, and humans decode this into a world they think they see and perceptions and behaviors they believe are them. We can be controlled entirely by the matrix and be no more than human robots responding to the data input or we can open our hearts and minds and see beyond what others can see. This means opening our minds to consciousness, which is not subject to manipulate in the matrix or the DNA program. It operates outside of the, uh, outside of space and time. This is your mind, which is the true matrix that you can have. You, you get what I'm saying? Like that's how you escape through that. And but it's through consciousness and you know knowledge of self and self mastery, and the vibrational walls of matrix of the matrix. If you look at all the incredible and endless interconnected manipulations that um, was described in the book, there are so many more. This clearly could not have been organized by people sitting around her table deciding their next move. Okay, uh, okay. so was there a computer system spewing out data on what to do and when? Those in authority who run and enforce the human control system follow a program in the same way as worker ants and bees follow the program broadcast by the queen. They are computer terminals on the matrix internet with the Saturn moon matrix triggering their already programmed DNA to respond according to the program. 
Okay, this is <laughs> oh, okay. So the bloodlines, they're saying this is the dark cabal, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. Those are pointing to the positions of power, um, are the most locked in because they were genetically created for that purpose. I.e., they know who you are at birth. Okay, but anyone who is not genuinely conscious, which is most of humanity, will be responding to their DNA Saturn Moon Matrix program which drives their thoughts, perceptions, and behavior. And that's all I'm gonna read from the article because basically it's just stuff that I always talk about um, anyways, and I've already shared this stuff with you guys. But yeah, the floor is open, y'all. Okay. May I, just, may I share? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, so cool. Yeah, so, so listen, this is, okay, so it's called a reticular, um, it's, it's called a reticular formation, right? So what you're looking at is two parts of the mind right you have your conscious mind which is your frontal lobe um it's the things that you carry out on your day-to-day -day basis is going to the grocery store taking care of your children paying your bills uh driving your car you know everything that you see in front of you every day right but there's another part to your mind there's your subconscious mind right and that is your reticular operating system or your ROS, right and it is in the back it's the, the stem that's in the back of your mind it's a um it's a place of sale it's like this little bunch of cells that's, that's residing back there but what this place houses like what that that little space houses is your subconscious mind now the trick is is like well what you have to understand is is that your imagination is a it's a pivotal part to your operating system right you have an operating system because you're a star being right so the star beings are able to talk to each other throughout the entire galaxy right they're able to talk to each other because everything is one if you um if you make a noise if you you speak right now a star trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of light years away at the very end of the galaxy resonates it vibrates because you're making noise and, and, and it understands like it's a part of you right inside of that star is actually vibrating with your sound with with everything that you're saying right now all stars hear everything that you say they're your ancestors so your subconscious mind or your ras right it is a place of like all of the things that has occurred in this life is your subconscious mind it keeps everything right so when a trauma happens right say that you were molested or say that you were traumatized with abandonment or uh you know just you know things like that like you, you those those things become filters right and your mind it puts you it puts you through these filters and says that oh you need to experience this or you need to experience that or you need to experience this and this is like difficult for people to to take a grasp or, or understand or take a hold of is that you can clean out that ROS. You can clean it out with your imagination, right? You can actually, you can absolutely listen to yourself and, and ask yourself the questions like, what's bother, what is the problem with this particular situation, right? And you would do what most beings do out in the universe when they get a, a thought that they don't want or a thought that's because like vibrationally, all beings operate in the energy of love, right? They, they operate in God's energy. So if they get a thought or if there's an, a vibration that is uh, working against that vibration, um, they know to get rid of it because love is the protective energy. It's like it protects everything, right? Nothing gets touched, nothing gets harmed. If uh, people are operating in the energy of love, they can't get touched because that's God's energy. It's his energy signature, it's his energy frequency, right? Is everybody, like you guys understand what I'm saying? Yes, we understand, you understand. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. your your Roz, you have the capability of cleaning it. Yeah, like this, like you, you can clean the clubhouse. This ain't the uh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. My bad, Lisa. Peace, Lisa. What's happening? Hey, what's going on, Princeton? <laughs> I want to ask you a question on the article you just read after this. Um, after this share, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. So cleaning out your ROS is basically taking the that information that it's giving you, right? Listening to yourself and hearing that information. And it'll like you have to it's going to freak you guys out because these things, they are beings. OK, they're like everything has consciousness, even your words. Right. So your very words have a consciousness. They have uh, understanding. They have, uh, you know, an emotional states okay they they'll talk to you like you like a person is talking to you regularly like like if they're right there in front of you right and you the problem is is that a lot of people are afraid of their imagination they think that it's child's play they think that uh the things that come from your imagination are like you know uh you know like if people are saying they are imagining something they're talking to an imaginary being 
children have imaginary friends for a reason okay like your imagination is the is the link to, to the it's the link to the spirit world it's the link to the universe right so your imagination if it's overactive you'll get beings that'll come in and be your friend right and uh, yeah. kids Imagine usually in like 30 seconds please I do, I do. I like kids usually can feel like these energies around them and they can communicate with them, right? So, okay. So I'm gonna just boil it down to this, right? What you were just talking about, that topic you were just talking about inside of your um, inside of your, your article, that's exactly what they were talking about, the matrix of the mind, right? Because once you can understand the mind and how it actually operates with the universe as above, so below, you can actually tap into the universe and feel the energy signatures and those energy signatures have consciousness. Thank you. Thank you for that share. Um, someone said they had a question. Oh, yeah, this is Ether. Thank you so much. Um, so I really found it interesting what you're reading. Um, two things earlier when I said I was curious about any intermediary like um, deliverers or transmitters or receivers, and it mentioned the moon. Um, so I was curious about that because I had kind of an intuition about that. And then um when you mentioned bees and i was thinking about the numerical um, the natural numerical sequential patterns of earth and the universe seems to be in line with like the fibonacci sequence right and so it seems like the bees i just looked up use that fibonacci sequence um in their family tree the way that they reproduce it it aligns with that number sequence so it that seems natural but the way they build their hives is in the hexagon shape the honeycombs are in the hexagon shape which it says they do that because it's the most efficient use of energy so it seems like there's like even in nature there's this dualistic like polarity like that's split between Saturn and what would be quote unquote like the natural way of like not being um, in some sort of a construct so I think that's interesting. Like, is it already built into the DNA memory of the biological systems on this planet um, to have that uh, Saturn relationship? And then also, one more. Okay, thing. let me answer that okay. question. Let me answer that because that's okay. So, you know, interestingly enough, um, it, 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 you know, if we take this particular approach that Saturn is governing the matrix with these particular sounds, then what does it mean when we talk about like the flower of life and sacred geometry, right? And the Fibonacci sequence and all of those things, do they not mean something? They do, but you know, guys, that is, they're also a part of the Saturn. They're also a part of the matrix because the matrix in and of itself is just the world that we live in. Do you understand? So I would say to answer your question that it's the same way if you ever, are you familiar with cymatics, right? When a tone is played, right? And a particular shape takes form. So if there's a tone that's being played, right? That's a frequency that's being sent out to govern the frequency of the earth. Then I think that all life form on earth would respond to that in some way. And maybe the bees couldn't keep up with that anymore. And that's why they started leaving the planet because they said that the bees have been leaving and we can't actually live you know, without B. So I think that that impacts that, that those frequencies will impact every form of life on planet, not just us, but like the earth, the trees, the, you know, the animals, all of that. Yeah. This is why this is important. Yeah. yeah I, that's, Lisa, that's very oh, true. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. I have one more question, but I can ask after you're finished. Oh, I just wanted to um, relate this to something that I experienced recently. Uh, over in France, where I went to old country in Carcassonne, France, which is a really old town. And I noticed that the church, the cathedrals had the same type patterns in the stained glass window, as you see <clears throat> several places online when you speak into water, which I thought was interesting. And then uh, when they uh, these these uh, cathedrals also have those stems that you talked about earlier, Lisa, at the very top. And there's something to them ringing the bells of these cathedrals, uh, which are usually really close to some type of waterway. Uh, and uh, this frequency that rings around the country, and there's, I believe, a connection between these cathedrals. Now, I don't know for sure, I'm still doing research, but I find that very interesting. 
Right. You, you guys ever seen one of those videos where they connect plants up to like some sort of like a, um, um, you know, frequency output and each plant has like a, a song that they sing. So this whole universe is made up of sound. Even when we can't hear it, the earth has its own heartbeat. It's set, it's called, the, they call it the Schumann resonance, but it's set to like seven point, um, three, two Hertz or something like that, like 7.86, something like that Hertz. And so generally when there's like a lot of, um, you know, a, a spike in it, when it's like a, a lot of human tragedy, like a, you know, war in one particular place will, you know, spike the human resonance for that day, a mass shooting, like the towers and the twin towers coming down, things like that. When a lot of people are reacting to something negatively, and now because we have the internet, we're impacting that human resonance. You know what I'm saying? Like it's more effective because we're all, you know, um, accessing information and events that are taking place around the world that, you know, people weren't doing 50 years ago. Like if you didn't live in China, you didn't know that, you know, people were going crazy in China outside of a newspaper, you know what I mean? Or something like that, I guess. So yeah. You had another question though. Um, um yeah. Neither. Yeah. So this, okay. So it seems like this realm is like, um, or this, you know, this, this planet is, has been utilized, has been like usurped and kind of like, you know, um, for harvesting energy for, you know, and so they have, so I'm, tr I'm trying to articulate my question. So the, 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 the bloodlines that have been um, continuing the, the hip, the hypnosis of the collective um it doesn't seem like this whole planetary alignment and uh nefariously symbiotic relationship would just be for like humans to perpetuate the wealth of their bloodline do you think that they're being used maybe as hosts for some by something else that's just continuously over the eons like using this place as a harvesting tool and then it's just up to us to become aware and to get our souls the you know the hell out of here um when we die well yes yeah. so a lot of people already lost you know what i'm saying so a lot of souls have already been eaten and, and gone right and beyond the point of retrieval um and maybe that's what they came here to do i i don't know you know what i mean but you know, what's the difference between a person, you know, people that are attracted to this, this type of conversation, like we are, right. And for a person like myself that, you know, I, you know, just consume, um, knowledge because I just want to know, I've always been quite inquisitive, right. I just want to know more just for my own knowledge, um, versus, you know, all the other people. So like the rest of your family, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the difference? So there is some sort of a difference between people that are not um, so easily programmed versus the masses, you know what I mean? That are easily programmed and no matter how much you show them or you try to explain things to them, they're not. So those people, in my opinion, um, they're more susceptible to being programmed and I'm sorry, to being like walk-ins and hosts, right? Um, I don't wanna get into the whole jab conversation, but, I feel like those are those, you know, for those that survive will be um, primed, you know what I'm saying, for that type of situation to become, you know, basically human hosts to um, outside entities. And I feel like those hosts already are already on, you know what I'm saying, people already been been hosting these off planet beings that can't necessarily walk around. I think that the individuals that we're dealing with when we're dealing with these bloodlines are of the, um, like the fallen angels, right? And when they, like, they're a hybrid, okay? And that's why they can function, you know what I'm saying? Like on the surface of the earth. But the earth, you know, when they're talking about, oh, climate change and, you know, CO2 emissions, I think they're, you know, their time is up. They can, you know what I'm saying? Whatever whatever they have that could allow them to stay on the surface of the earth is, is going away. That's why they're trying to push people into the metaverse, you know, that's why they're trapping souls. Like they're doing, they're in a, in a mad scramble. So I just, you know, we're at the time now that everyone needs to see the big picture 
um, as to what all is really actually taking place. And you can put it together for yourself. I'm not telling you to listen to me and that my version of this explanation, you know what I'm saying, is exactly what it is. It's for me, it's what it is for me. You know what I mean? But definitely do your own research. That's why I always provide, you know, so many um, references in the discord so that you guys can go look it up for yourself. So hopefully that answered your question, Ether. Um, anybody else wanted to chime in? Yeah, can I add just a little bit to that? Of course. Okay. All right. So. Please keep it on topic. <laughs> yeah, I promise I will. I, I will. I will. I will. I will. Um, understanding, like, sympathetic resonance, right? We are, like, again, we are beings of vibration. We are beings of energy, right? So the words that we speak and the words that we say to our world and within ourselves and to just outside of ourselves have a signature, have a, have a, a an energy signature, right? And those energy signatures, um, they basically lead our lives. They guide our lives, right? The, the, into the places that we go, the people that we know, our friends, family members, right? They guide our lives. What if you could take that, right? And like they're, they're talking about the like pushing people into the metaverse. What if you could really connect to the universe? What if you really could connect to the universe, like on a on a physical level? We we already do that though, like um, through our astral travels, right? Through our meditations, um, through our spirituality. You know what I'm saying? What with a lot in our chakras, we already do that. But we just a lot of people don't trust themselves enough to believe. You know what I mean? Like what they're experiencing. Okay, I have a little bit of information for you guys. All right, so back in 2012, um, we came into, uh, the, it was the, the ending of a cycle, right? It was the ending of Kali Yuga, 200 or 25,000, 250, years, something, right? It's Kali Yuga, right? It came to an end. And we came into the time of Ophetius. And Ophetius is the, he's the water bearer. Uh, he has the, the great vase of knowledge, right? That he pours upon you know, the, the people of humanity. Um, he's only come, I think, once or twice before, and this is like his, I think, third time here. And his information has been brought to, that's what's bringing all of this stuff to light. This is why we've gotten all of the, the up programs and people and the sayings, and like, we're coming to this, like, this this crescendo, right? Right now, it's like it's the crescendo, right? Um, in this space, from 2012 from two to 2019, we were given a decision, right? And it happened uh, from an incident that occurred back in 1987, right? It was a situation that happened in 1987 and we were given a choice, right? Humanity as a whole was given a choice. Didn't even know that you were a part of this whole situation, right? And you chose to move forward with, um, you chose to, to leave the current understanding that you were in and move forward into a new understanding. And when this happened, you guys beat the world. Like you, you won, you won. Like you, you gave everything for love, right? And, and that, this is why we're here. This is why I'm here. Like I'm telling, I, I came personally to tell y'all y'all won and y'all beat, y'all beat the game. But like, it's, you got to understand that you have an inheritance now. Like you got, you got wealth guys. I'm talking about big time universal wealth and, uh, I, I, I want to help, like, cause it's like so much you got to know about this universe and how you play in this whole situation, man. But we're all one. Every star, every planet, every being in the universe is one, and we've always been able to resonate and hear this place. We've been sending, um, we've been sending crop circles down here forever, forever sending crop. But that's like before we could come in and actually speak to. You. Like we're here now, like we're we're actually a lot, like it's one hundred and forty four thousand of us. And we're all over the planet, right? Remember that hundred and forty-four thousand number? Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the one forty-four. Mm -hmm. Is this is code? That's all it is. It's, it's code. Well, I'm telling you, and I'm one of them. I'm actually the leader. My name is Obatara. It ain't no, no one hundred forty-four thousand people, bro. That's not that. That will come back to the earth. To yes, we're here. Okay. All right. I'll yeah. Okay. So, so one, I'm sorry, Lisa. One 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 forty-four actually means crystals. It's, let me tell you something. The the 144 is, is y'all have to understand that a lot of things that are 
in order for you to really get this stuff, you have to be able to know how to channel information and you have to know how to decode information. And so nothing is ever as it seems on the surface, okay? So imagine that we've got billions of people on the planet and only 144,000 is gonna be saved. That makes no sense. But if you actually go do the math and go look into what the 144,000 is, this is a reference to your chakras, okay? This is a reference to your chakras because if you take from your root chakra, and each root chakra is represented by a um, a, a, a petal, a, um, a lotus petal, petal flower, the flower petals. By the time you get up to your your crown, they all add up to 144,000, which represents your um, activating your um, your light body, your macabre, your vehicle. Okay. And to once get you up, activate that, you get don't up, need your physical body to no get, more. Exactly to get up out of here. So we have to stop taking things so literally. There ha there's a lot of coded language in um, all of the ancient texts. Nothing is ever written straight. Even when you're reading like occult books and things like that, you can't read a book and then believe everything from top to bottom. You can't. You can't read not one article. Everything that you're reading, you got to read between the lines and you have to extract, you know what I'm saying, and build up your own um, knowledge. The best way to do this is, um, is through what's called um, correspondence and syncretism. It's the same concept of when you do in a, um, a research paper in school, right? You have to have multiple different sources and cross references. It's the same thing when you're doing your own research, right? You have to become that researcher. And so the, 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 the extra step is you have to be able to decode because a lot of people lie in books. Hell, they wrote history books and told lies in those. So like it's, it's a long over time study for you to be able to, you know what I'm saying? And then truth has a certain resonance. If you're on the frequency, you know what I'm saying? If you're on that heart frequency of just really having a pure heart and just wanting to know and having a, just a deep desire for your own self, not for you to go tell everyone, you know what I'm saying? If that's your path, that's your path. But your initial inclination is, I just want to know. I want to know. You know what I mean? And it will be shown to you. It really will be shown to you. So that's that's it's it's a lot of codes that's written out there that we have to become those decoders but um the floor is open hey sensei welcome to the room <laughs> hey lisa could i add this is shadow, Go ahead, shadow. Uh, thanks for having yeah, me you got it. uh in according in, in accordance with what you said uh like like you said you you cannot read that bible in a in, a, in its liter in a literal sense you have to understand that um that there's two uh, types of knowledge when it when it comes to these uh, these these religious texts, whether they be ancient, modern, you know, um, that there there's two different uh, 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 meanings to that. Shadow, what's that ticking in your background? Sound like your turn signal? Oh, my hazard lights. My bad. Yeah, so, turn it. Yeah, they're they're off. Uh, so you have there's they're, they're going to give you two different types of knowledge, you know. The, well, they're going to give you only one, but there's two types. You got the eso, the esoteric, and the exoteric. And it's the exoteric, the outside, the the common knowledge that they give to the masses. You know, the the on the surface type shit. You know, you don't got to do no digging. You just take the information for what it is, and that's what most of the masses run with. Not understanding that there is a uh, esoteric meaning to the to the to the knowledge and that's the that's the the knowledge that they keep for themselves you know the meanings you know where lisa is saying you got to go and decode it yeah that's the that's the esoteric knowledge so and that's that's what you got to get it doesn't necessarily literally mean it's going only 144,000 people are going to get saved that's 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 coded shit for something totally else that nine times out of ten has something to do with something going on with inside of self. So I just wanted to add that. Guys, 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 no, I'm, you, you're mistaken what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is, is that we are the 144,000 and we're here on earth. Like we're here to help you guys wake up. Like we're not, we're, you, you are all saved. You're, you're God, you're God's children, bro. And like y'all got an inheritance that's coming to you. It's faded and that's it. You are coming home. That's it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not.
jacking with that religious stuff, bro. Ain't no, it's no, not, it's, coming it's not religious, bro. It's not religious. Like, you have to be understanding right well, now. You didn't, you didn't, but you didn't hear it outside. You didn't get that information outside of, uh, of a religious text, though. You got it inside a religious text. If you hadn't have read that book, <laughs> no, you I even did not, bro. I got it from the man himself. I got it from God himself because he's my dad. Okay, let's get with it. I, I can't have this conversation. Okay, thank yeah, 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 yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. God uh, did. <laughs> well, with God, <laughs> like, oh God, my God. Is, God, understand. Like, this is what I'm trying to. <clears throat> this is what I'm trying to like. Um, kind of wake people up to that the God of this earth, right? Um, the Gnostics spoke about this earth being a flaw. Okay, they spoke about the demiurge. This is when you're dealing with. Yahweh, yo hey va hey, this is what you're dealing with Saturn, okay? And if you go back, which I have done, and I still need to do more digging, and I'm gonna keep going down this this rabbit hole because it's a good one. It's it's deep, right? Just for my own understanding. This is my second room, the religious part of this, and who's really running this shit? That's gonna be private. That's gonna be on the Patreon, and that's gonna be a video with slides and all that. Um, <clears throat> so this would be my first time can doing I, that. Can so I speak to that, Lisa? Not, Yes, one second, please. Let me finish, okay? Um, so what I'm trying to say is that we got, they got everybody worshiping, whether it doesn't matter what three religious umbrellas you're under, right? Everybody worshiping the same stuff that the people in Hollywood are worshiping. And it's not some benevolent God. And so like, when you look at Saturn time, and you see this, the, 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 you know, saying Santa Claus, like the, the man with the, the white hair, you know what I'm saying? And the, the long white beard and, you know, Gandalf and the Lord of the Rings, um, and all these different depictions. This is Saturn that they're depicting. Okay. This is what that is. And so all of the three major war religions fall up under Saturnic worship. Okay, it's the and that's the thing, and you, you guys have to see the references even in your Jesus. There's a reference to the Messiah, which is though he's represented by the one eye as well. This is all all of these things are references to Saturn. Okay, so if you want to figure out how to escape the black cube, which is the cube is the lockdown chamber. <laughs> I didn't figure that out. Okay, and so when did you that you know when you see them dealing with with CERN and the Large Hadron Collider, and they're trying to create new black holes to go into different places, they have to use a hypercube, which is the tesseract, which is the cube inside of a cube, right? So they're actually trying to create a whole nother, like, um, you know, world that they're trying to, that they can trap you in. The only way out of this thing is through death. And the knowledge that you oh. need, that's the only way out of here is through death. No, and not, no, and not at all. Not, and, and not, okay. I'm gonna need you to put, please just be quiet. So before I move you to the audience, okay? Please stop doing that, okay? So, I, I mean, ain't no chariots coming to get you while you're sitting on your porch or while you're at work, okay? People die. And then, you know what I'm saying? Whether your body is going to die and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to go um, either come back here or you're going to figure out how to get up out of here, how to get outside of the cube. Have y'all seen the movie The Cube? <laughs> when they got, they, they're got they going from yes. room to room and each room has another cube with the number sequences on there. Hello? This is how they're showing you all the stuff in all the movies. The second, um, ma not, not, not the Matrix, but the second Lord of the Rings is called The Towers. Those are the two twin towers. They had Gandalf in one tower and what's his name? The other guy, um, Saruman in another tower. That was the guy that betrayed him. They represented the duality. Okay. And, and Saruman was, you know what I'm saying? He was on the side of Sauron, Sauron, which was Sauron. Saturn yeah. himself. Hello. So he was trying to gain Saturn's power so he can rule over the earth. And let me, hold on, where are my notes at? Because when the movie started, I actually went back and looked at the beginning of the movie. So when the movie started and they gave out all those rings, they gave three rings were given to the elves, which are 
they were said to be the most beautiful, right? These were the immortal beings on earth um, and they were the wisest. And this they correlate these people with the Nordics, okay? The Nordics, okay? If y'all know who those are, the people from Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, that part of the world, okay? And then seven rings went to the dwarf lords, okay? And then nine rings were went to the race of men who were all, um, who um, um, the only thing that they desired, nothing else above desire but power, okay? And so, the, but there was one ring because Sauron fooled them all. And he kept the one ring that controlled all the rings. That's why it's called Lord of the Rings. That's Saturn, okay? Anyways, I'm gonna go on mute and let you guys talk. Whoever wants to chime in, go ahead. Okay. Um, the first things first, like guys, we're we're energetic beings. We don't ever die. Ever, ever, okay, ever. Uh, we um, change our I'm gonna move you to the audience. Uh you can come back up in a few minutes, but you've been doing a lot of talking and like I feel like you're just here to spew like whatever your perspective is that doesn't have anything. It's not building on the conversation, it's actually sidetracking the points that we're trying to build upon. So um just, you know, go on time out for a few minutes and then you can come back up. Um, who's next? Who wanted to chime in? Oh, my God. I got something to say. Go ahead, Picasso. Hey, Qu hey Queen Lisa. Hey, everybody. Um, so the fact that Saturn is worshipped on Saturday is um, is very powerful. And very enlightening to know that 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 is the Saturn day, the 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 day of um, either worship or um, meditation. And um, I just I have to see Lord of the Rings again after this discussion, um, so I can get back attuned to. The alignment of Saturn. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you go back and listen to the replays tonight because they'll be down tomorrow. Okay. Um. Yep. And so you so you can get this from the beginning to get the full picture of everything that was covered so far. That I covered like in the first hour. Um. But yeah. Anybody else wanted to chime in? Me. Go ahead, Johanna. Hey. So when you were reading about the cube how we are in this matrix guess what cube was put in mesopotamia a long time ago and people go there every year and go around the damn cube like we see these damn animals going in circles right right yeah i covered that earlier that, right yeah, the islamic so, the one the islam religion yeah mm -hmm. right so that's the damn cube that was brought here you know because now people are like the Anunnaki, the Sectorians, da, da, da. that was that shit to keep us, like you said, here. And I know people get upset, but there's no, no other way out of here but than to live the physical vessel. So until that cube, and I also heard a story that that cube's color was different when it was first brought here. And it started changing because apparently it's like sucking the energy throughout the millennia that it started getting to the dark color that it is today. So it's very interesting. And the Lord of the Rings is just so, the fact that Sauron's name is Sauron, like Saturn, is so crazy to me. And then everybody else's name is an L, like in the elf world, you know, like the L's, the L right. mm -hmm. I mean, I love those movies. Which is I, Saturn is L as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because he's yeah. part of, you know, the whole group. And another movie that people should watch because they talk about Saturn a little bit, but they put Jupiter, Jupiter instead is Jupiter ascending. And they give you all the tidbits about it. Cause I'm like, I get they're talking about Jupiter, but all this shit is about Saturn and Enki and Lil and the whole Anunnaki family and the harvesting the humans and keeping our consciousness locked and then the bees and it, it's a lot in that movie too that people need to watch because they literally tell you the whole story of these um beings that brought that cube down here to keep us enslaved and to keep us as you know uh, farm animals i guess or whatever but 
Yeah. And then somebody else was talking about, you know, unlocking our consciousness through Mother Universe, that movie called Lucy with um, Scarlett Johansson. That's the whole point of that movie, how she taps in to her conscious, like 100%, and she turns into what? Black matter towards the end. So I just wanted to chime in into that. Mm Mm-hmm. And so um, the whole black cube um, is a is a reference to dark matter energy. Just so you guys know that, so you guys know that. right? So that's something else that they're tapping into. The problem is that they're having whenever they take the dark matter. Dark matter is what created before you have creation, right? And any sort of formation or the inkling or the beginning of a world, um, there is the pleroma the the nothingness right that is um the all that they speak about in you know um in the cabalion okay the all the the universe the mind is all the universe is mental this is space of nothingness and so in order for formation to happen they have to dark matter has to participate in that so they figured out a geometrical way to trap some black matter into a cube, I believe. And what they're trying to do here on earth when they're dealing with people with have that have dark matter, which is melanin, is they're trying to do something like that on a smaller scale on the earth. But whenever they take the melanin outside the body, it transmutes, it transforms and it does not, it's not stable. So they can't really, you know what I'm saying? Um, That's why they're looking for the God gene. All of these things are connected you guys and so the why is this important why do you need to know this because if you have this knowledge then when you are going through your spiritual practices then you know what is the end goal what are, what are you doing this for how do i navigate and so all the things that are being said today in here then there's so many things that you can go and study to help you because whenever people come to me in my consultations there's like okay I've done this. I've done that. Where should I begin? What does it mean to tap into my ancestors? You know, how do I set up an altar? You know, um, I had this dream. Um, How do I do astral travel and things of that nature? Well, you have to understand the nature of the world that you live in and why you're doing what you're doing. That helps to help you um, fast track your work. So it's not going to take you 15, you know, years to get where people that took 15 years to study are right now. You can get there about a lot faster. So that's why this is important to understand the nature of the, the matrix and the reality that we live in. But um, the floor is open, guys. Anybody can chime in. I would like to say something. And go ahead. Yes. So I just, sorry, that was a glass, but I just came in here and I saw the room on the Lord of the Rings analogy. And of course, I would like to know more about the Lord of the Rings analogy that is being presented in here. And I have seen the movie, but if there is anything hidden within it, I would like to know. Yeah, we've been in here for a little while. So, I mean, I started building on this from the top of the room. I, sp- oh. I think I spoke for probably like 40 minutes straight. Um, so you might want to go back um, when the room is finished and you can listen to the replays. It will only be up on, until the morning and then it will be up on the patreon okay um let me take a quick break you guys let you guys know that this this is you know i don't participate in all this ritual holiday stuff i just make my own but i am offering half off of my um spiritual consultations so if you would like to do that you can click the link at the top so normally um if you can get uh it's 150 for one hour normally it's 150 for um for 30 minutes so anyone that books with me for this week then you can have one hour consultation, spiritual consultation for um, the, the price of 30 minutes. So just go to the website and you can book there and you can see the description of what we do there. I do um, divination um, and I use um, I channel and I use um, divination cards as well. And we tap into um, 
you know, what is going on, you know, with your subconscious mind. And, you know, we look at the past, the present and the future. That's what I do. So, you know, it's going to be 150, which is 50% off um, for one hour. Okay. So that guys definitely um, click the link at the top. Also, while we're here, um, if you click at the top again, that's my digital business card. Please make sure to follow my YouTube channel and subscribe and turn the notification bell on. I would greatly appreciate that so much because it's a new channel and I'm almost, you know, I'm getting there to a thousand subscribers, but I'm not there yet. Um, some great content is up there and you guys can also subscribe to my Patreon. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, but what we're talking about today is the Saturn matrix. Okay. The Lord of the rings. And I have already covered that already. Um, what I want to go into right now is talking about like the black cube again, because that's the whole thing. This how this black cube is being worshipped everywhere. Okay, it's a lot of pictures in the Discord, but I'm gonna put these pictures on a slide and um, put them up on on Patreon um, on the video that I'm doing. There's a company called Black Cube. Um, let me click on this and read this to you guys real quick, so I can tell you who this company is. So the Black Cube. This is a and when you go to their site, it actually come, it folds out into a black cube. So the black cube is a select group of veterans from the Israeli elite intelligence. This is basically Mossad, okay? Units that specializes in tailored solutions to um, complex business and litigation challenges. So these are Mossad agents that have formed a company called Black Cube. And they, um, from my understanding, I think they have come under a lot of heat for um trying to protect and defend harvey weinstein against you know those allegations so when you're dealing with that you're dealing with the the, the jeffrey epstein's of the world um and you're dealing with a lot of high powered can you guys hear me am i even in here oh my god am i here okay now you're yeah. here we can hear yeah, you i wasn't even on the screen anymore so you know so you're dealing with a lot of high powered um you know um people working for the government that's, and that's the name of their company. So it's called the Black Cube. Now, you guys can look at that. Now, if you go look at one of the companies that we talk about all the time on here on Clubhouse, we talk about Black Rock. Okay. So Black Rock is another one of those companies that is represented by the Cube. And as we know, Black Rock owns most of these corporations. Okay. They're owned by Black Rock. Yo, yo. Black Rock. Yeah, <laughs> Can I speak, Lisa? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you speaking about BlackRock. I had a question about that. I was wondering, um, um, like, how does that relate to blockchain? And you also mentioned something about them wanting to create, like, a new star system or a new constellation. Can you speak about how that will maybe affect the Makurba and stuff like that? Oh, no, I didn't mention anything about them trying to create a new star system. What I did mention was them um, <clears throat> changing the the dualistic nature of this reality from, you know, when they were burning down the twin energies, when they, they dropped the twin towers back in 2001. And most recently, they, the way that they displayed that same killing of the twin energy, which is duality, which is the pillars on the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life is um with the george floyd um you know that whole thing right minnesota twin cities um you guys y'all have to y'all have to get her y'all have to get her like hold on hold on you asked me a question let me answer um you guys have to try to you know get here earlier if not because i've already covered this so um they implant they put in they knocked down the towers and they put up a one world trade center okay and that one world trade center is representational of trying to bring about the singularity okay it's a different energy that they're trying to channel in and i'm not sure if they're going to keep using saturn to do it or not but it's not going to work okay so i you know as far as crypto i don't know anything about that um and the blockchain that's not what we're talking about right now so and i don't have a lot of information on that and yeah, no, I didn't say anything about anything about star constellations. So, did you have any other questions, though? Yeah, you keep bringing up the twin uh, towers and the twin energy. The once we go into the age of Aquarius, the following 
is going to be the uh, Gemini, which is representing representative of you know the twin like nature, the duality. So, um, can you like do you, do you get what I'm saying? Can you like speak on that? Does that make sense? Right, brother. I I get what you're saying. Um, I don't want to backtrack though because there's some people that's you know been in here since we started. So I would just recommend that you go back and listen. Um, um, after the, the room is over so you can catch the replays, okay? Because I did cover that already. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else want to chime in? Hello? Hey, what's up, Sirius? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, appreciation for the room. Gratitude to everybody. It was a great conversation tonight. Uh, just want to say also, shout out, it's Bobby Hammond's birthday tonight. Just want to let everybody know that. Woo-hoo. Ooh, that's my uncle in my head. Shout out to Bobby Hammett. Yes, sir. Good guy. Shout out to that. You know, yes. just want to let everybody know that. For sure. Uh, you was giving some great, I was writing some notes down because I know I was trying to hop in earlier and uh just like couldn't hop in. My voice wasn't working. But yo, um, very interesting too that you was talking about. Uh, isn't it also uh is the USA is in a Saturn return right now, right? You're talking about every 28 years. When we talk about, about astrology, uh, we also have to give importance to that year that you're talking about every 28 years, which is right now going on, that you the U.S. is in their side of return. I'm just going to drop a whole bunch of shit real quick. He was also talking about um, the Black Sun and whatnot. We also got to give remembrance about Dionysus, you know, and Bacchus, which is like, you know, they have information right. about... Yeah. And they give, you know, and I, I was thinking about why he's talking, you know, he's talking about like the whole religion and the culture of the whole Saturn worship. Right. Well, if you look up and you go to, you know, to study the information, you know, Bacchus is the god of wine, madness and, you know, all that stuff. That's what the culture is about. You know what I mean? It's the delusion. You know what I mean? And that's what we talk about Maya, the Matrix, and all this other good stuff. You know, I'm just gonna bounce around. Um, we was also you also got to give reference to how Bacchus and Dionysus are reference off of Osiris. You know what I mean? So information, okay, break yeah. It, break it down. So <laughs> it's a lot of shit going on. You know what I mean? But you know, this is all talking about, you know, all the same thing, how, you know, you're talking about the worship. They talk about, uh, it's a lot. You said about locking a box in a box, right? There's an old, I can't remember it, but we used to talk about it. I had like a little popped in my head, you know what I mean? It's about Phil Valentine, or was it C. Freeman? I can't remember. One of the two that were talking about, I think definitely C. Freeman now, um, talking about how it's, I guess the freedom from the box, you know, they say the box in the box is, is a prison in a prism, right? But what happens when you put a box and it's wrapped around a circle, right? And I don't know, it was just, I was just, I don't know, it's a lot going on, but it was pretty inf- interesting information Lisa was giving out. And I'm just still trying to conduct all the clues, but you're definitely dropping. Yeah, thank you. It's definitely, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm trying to give out as much information, but this is a deep rabbit hole, right? This is mm-hmm. this is why this is room number two. That that's why I, you know, I needed to do a series about this. And this is, you know, the second portion of it. And, you know, I don't want to belabor the point, so I'll do like a third one and that'll be that. But that's gonna just be for the Patreon. You know what I mean? Um but yeah, anybody else want to chime in? It, it gets very deep, y'all. It gets very deep. Listen, let me. I think I let me play. Let me play y'all a video right quick that Kingy had to say. Hold on, this was on Vlad TV. I forget what year it was. Hold on, listen to this, y'all. Twenty fourteen. Well, in your in your new song, uh, well, the last song you put out, King Judah. Right. You said uh, in the in the chorus, you said, "Got them Gentiles busting at me." Uh huh. Now. Uh, a Gentile, from what I understand, is a is a non-Jew. Uh, but Europeans. Europeans. Yeah, Gentiles. They not Jews. They 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 worship Saturn. They were, that's Satan is just Saturn in the Bible. 
And we talking about the Vatican and all of them. They worship Satan. And that's Saturn. Gentiles are not Jews. But when you think about it, Jews come from the Judah. So, so even, even the people who think they Israelites, yeah, you still of that because you're, you're born in one of those zodiacs. So you still of that, but you're taking it literally. And you're not supposed to take it literally. Even in the Bible, it says these, it says these are allegories. You know what an allegory is? It's a made up story that got a deeper meaning. So so you said that the Vatican worships Satan. The Vatican worships Saturn. The Vatican worships Dagon, a fish god. And it goes back to, you know, you know, if you ever know anything about the Assyrians, Assyrians and Sumerians. And, you know, if you know anything about that, you know, Dagon was this fish god. And the Vatican, them, you, you got to always look at things with the, knowing that they have a deeper meaning. Like, I spend every day studying this stuff, you know, even from the robes that they wear, the black robes in the churches, you see those, you see the, I forgot what they call but you see the priests and stuff wearing them black robes. Those robes represent Saturn. They'll never tell you this. And I ain't even finna, I ain't finna even get really too deep into all that. I'm just, I'm just touching on it a little bit to get people, you know, a little, a little awareness so they can go, so they can go do some research in it themselves. Like a lot of these things that I've learned, you know, it's a lot of good people out there that got a lot of knowledge, like Dr. Phil Valentine, um, Dr. Clark, um, Booker T. Coleman, um, Jordan Maxwell, um, Lloyd Pye. Michael Tellinger, um, Santos Bonacci. It's a lot of people, uh, and there's more people that I've that I've uh, studied and paid attention to, man, and got some got some real good wisdom from. So, and that's a, and, and doing my own research and studies and coming to this and All right, I just want to say that I'm playing that under the Fair Use Act. Under the Fair Use Act, I'm allowed to play that video. Um, so y'all heard what Ching had to say. Chingy, you know, he was talking about the whole Saturn thing, right? And, I, you know, I feel like this is something that a lot of them are very much aware of in the in the industry. You know, he's he named all the people that talk about this, Jordan Maxwell being the first one that woke, woke me up to it. Um, but he named the people that, you know, speak on this particular thing. But... Um, what do you guys think? You know what I'm saying? Like what what you know, y'all wanna chime in? I do. Can I chime in? Can I can I say this real quick? All three Abrahamic religion are sectarian religions. Uh we talked about this, Lisa, when we were talking about bloodlines a couple of months ago. And yeah, he's right. It's all Saturn. It's the three, it's Abraham. What is he the father of? The three major religions. Who do they answer to? The Vatican. So, yeah, it makes sense to me. Hi. So, I just wanted to speak real quickly to the cube and how that geometric shape is is an entrapment. It, it captures. And forgive me because I smoked a little bit of weed before I got on here. And <laughs> trying to keep my thoughts together. But there is um, a scientist. He was a scientist, philosopher. Uh, he died a couple of years ago. His name was Patrick Flanagan. And Patrick Flanagan, I believe the book that he wrote was called um, The Pyramid Code. But, and you can look him up on YouTube. He does a lot of videos or did a lot of videos that talked about how to balance that energy of the cube out. And he also goes into architecture like the lady was speaking about earlier in the churches, um, the way they have the dome ceilings, but we're living in these square houses. But so there were two things that he talked about doing. One of the things that he talked about was adding a circle in the corner of your room where two walls meet. That meet. So the, like the resonance of that circle in the square room helps balance and release some of the entrapment. And the other thing that he talked about doing was simply making um, small pyramids. And his thing was, you can make it out of sticks and as long as the measurements are proportionate, you can make them out of sticks or you can make it out of paper. But 
placing those in the room itself balances up the energy and you know that'll help balance out our whole resonance and allow more and more information to come through regardless of what they're ringing and tinging up there there's always a way out i land with that absolutely the floor is open guys anybody can chime in I saw you unmute your mic, Sirius. Did you want to say something? <laughs> I was wondering, uh, does anybody have any uh, information about the Tetradramacon? About, because, you know, I remember you talking about, uh, oh, what was it called uh, in Marvel? Shit, what's that cube called? The Tesseract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a cube inside a cube. What if, I, don't, I mean, if anybody can pull up, a, what's it called, a PTR? I, I mean, I don't know if I could do, I don't know how to do that shit yet, but, uh, and that also if you turns can, into a cross, mm -hmm. by the way, the test. Yes. The, if you lay it you, out, if you yep. literally across the cross of the ninth Templar or whatever, it's exactly. Crazy. You're right. It's a hundred percent. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like, so we can on, oh man. <laughs> yeah. So to mm -hmm. touch on the tetragrammaton, it's basically the, mm -hmm. Is it it translates into L, the highest name of God, which is um, Yod Hey Pa Hey, in um, Jewish mysticism. Okay, so that's just a quick down and dirty um, of what the Tetragrammaton represents, and so we're still dealing with the Saturn cube. <laughs> Everything leads back to that cube, y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to let y'all know. Okay, so that is a, that's a tetragrammaton. It's the yod he va he, the you know what I'm saying? It's Yahweh. Yeah, why y'all so quiet? Anybody else want to chime in? Uh, I will ask you a question, Lisa, because uh, I'm uh, arguing with my my pal here, Eli. Um, is Bobby Hammond, does he believe in any type of magic stuff? Because he says he doesn't believe in magic at all. He only believes in actual um, where people born and how things are in this universe. He don't believe in magic. Is that true? I don't know. Nah, Bobby, Bobby taught people about magic and occult knowledge and stuff. Tell like him, that. Lisa, tell him. <laughs> right. So, absolutely not. That's completely false. Yeah. That's totally the opposite of what Bobby Bobby represents. That part. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, for real. Yep, for real. So um, are you guys pretty much on point with the cube and the cube representation? Like, um, just start paying attention. You know, when you're looking through magazines, like even Bill Gates, he had, um, you know, he had a black cube um, with a white cube on top of the black cube giving a speech about, guess what? depopulation okay so that even that um idea like i just want y'all to know that all of this is tied in together right um you know as far as who governs the world you cannot trust any of these celebrities because they do sell their souls these people most of them are tagged from birth and the rest of them are like you know what i'm saying like just um street runners basically right that are not on the level of like like of beyonce and jay-z and you know what i'm saying and the people that's in that particular club and the lebron james and michael jordan's of the world and all the you know whoever else you can name that you know that are the quote unquote l eat l eat the elite okay which is l is what the highest name of god the tetragrammaton the yod he vod hev okay um, which is in direct relation to the cube, because actually the, the, um, you know, the cube at the top is also those two triangles. Okay. The, the cube, the, um, the cube, the, um, hexagon that's on the top of the, you know, of, um, Saturn is also represented by the, um, the six pointed star. Okay. So if you know, you know. It's just information, guys. You do with it whatever you like and put it into the proper context as you're moving about the world, and as you're doing your studies. So you kind of know, you know what I'm saying, what things go where and you know what I mean? You know how to um, maneuver effectively. Okay. Any questions, guys? If you don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and close the room or comments.
Um, so I, I was wondering about um, the actual cube, and we mentioned the, the Catholic Church, and we've also talked about the Tefillin on top of the four heads. Um, so that that's two uh, religions. So um, I was wondering where that cube would would be in, like, say, uh, Protestant denomination, or wh or where they're po posting it, or do, is it? in a church somewhere, I, I'm trying to scan it and nothing's come. I just cannot ever remember seeing a, a black cube. It, and I went and toured the Vatican with a private tour and I, I never, I don't, I'm, I'm scanning, I don't recall. And I'm sure they do, because I know there's all kinds of stuff underneath the Vatican. I'm just saying, are they doing it in plain sight? Or is it in, you know, hidden in plain sight? Is that that type of thing? And is it happening in, in Protestant, like, we we can clearly see the Teflon uh, over the third eye, so that's not being that's there there. And so I'm just wondering where this is. It's all over the place. Where's the symbolism in the church that happens every Sunday? Um, the communion, the body of Christ. So Christ is the cube. You know what I mean? So gotcha. Um, that he part. Is the okay. He's, he, he's the Messiah. Exactly. I thought so there would be like a symbol like. since we were yeah. talking about all the symbols that we see that's everywhere right. the cube. So is there something they have, um, um, I'm scanning? I might peep in. <laughs> Let's see if I see. They something. have a sculpture in the Vatican. The cross. They have a, a sculpture which it has like a circle, like a ball inside of a broken cube type of thing because I'm reading um, David Wilcox's book and he goes into the pineal gland and how our conscious is trapped in a, is trapped in a cube and they do have a, a sculpture out in St. Peter's Basilica of like this uh, cube broken with a ball in the middle like cracked so they do have those symbolisms and also, it is there i do remember that yep 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 exactly okay, thank that's you the for cube. that that's the cube and remember can that can you cite these... that book please yeah let me get the the name of it but also the um... oh my god sorry i'm just i'm trying to uh, i'll i'll be back let me get the name of the book Okay, and so <clears throat> while we're talking about the Vatican and the Pope, and I mean, that's also a part of it, right? And so when the Vatican, when the Pope says that he is, and the Pope is not the person, it's the position, right? That he is the vicar of God on earth, right? He speaks for God, which God is he speaking for? This is also Saturnic worship as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. And so this is where, you get into a lot of this um, very debaucherous type of behavior while in secret they're worshiping the black Madonna and child and they're channeling feminine energy while executing patriarchy, if that makes sense. Right? So while this is a feminine planet, um, it's a water planet, you know, birth is in water. So it's a feminine planet, but water rep really represents rebirth. Okay. But they have, you know, hijacked the energy of the planet through Saturn, um, and and um, they have established patriarchy, patriarchal rule on this planet. And this has started with um, Enki and Enlil. But Enki, Enki is Yahweh in the Bible, Yod Hey Vod -Hev. That is Enki. Okay, they said that the Earth used to be called Ki. All right, so <clears throat> they are utilizing the feminine energy right to and they're channeling that energy so this is where you see a lot of sexuality that's being used in advertising right they use sex to sell right they um and more and more they have turned it up way high and now you know they're reaching for the children now they're reaching for the children okay which children are still under the protection of the feminine energy and so they're usurping this energy everywhere because they, they the energy is that's being that's being transmitted is not as powerful anymore because Saturn is an old planet that's dying. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that that what whatever they were out there trying to do with those rings and they're out there trying to build new rings and things of that nature, um, it's not working anymore because the consciousness on the planet has raised to a pitch degree. So when they are saying they want to depopulate the the planet because there's not, you know, there's too many people on, on the planet. 
that's not true. Okay. That's just not absolutely not true. You know, that's not what it is. But like Rod Hayes always says, until the big mama energy is being restored. And so you got to bring back the, the sweet waters. Okay. You got to bring back the sweet waters. And then that's, that's the new era that we're moving into, but everything has to fall down first, right? We have to go through a period of, um, decay and turmoil. And one thing has to end the same way that they knock down those towers. We have to, you know, knock down the banking system, but they're doing it. It's imploding from inside, you know, all their systems, all the 13 families, the bloodlines and, you know, all these things that they've had going on through Babylonian, the Babylonian um, law system, the Babylonian debt system, the Babylonian taxation system, all these things are very ancient that they're using. And when we thought the Roman Empire fell, they just re-erected it in D.C., Rome, you know, Italy, where they have the Vatican and in, in London. And so these have been, this is the new Rome. So Rome really never fell like that. You know what I mean? The Roman rule has always been in place with the same symbolism and worshiping the same energy that was giving them the power in the first place. But that's over now. Hey, Johanna, are you back? Lee? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You got a question? Oh, yes. I wanted to ask you. Um, so you were you just said that Saturn may be losing, well, is losing its power. Do you perhaps think that's why they put that Black Knight satellite up there, maybe to add more force to that or something? Now, you know, I don't know enough about the Black Knight satellite. I did watch the documentary that Billy Carson did, but I don't know enough about it to speak about it extensively. But I would think that if the Earth is, um, I'm sorry, not the Earth, but we did the the hollow moon, um, you know, talk. I did that. And now we're talking about the, so the, the matrix, you know, theoretically consists of Saturn sending signals to the moon, which then triangulates those symbols, those signals to the earth. And so the black Knight satellite could have been placed out there, um, as a part of that network, you know, it's very possible that it does play a part. And if for nothing else, it just observes. You know what I mean? So, but I don't know enough about the Black Knight satellite to go any further than that into it. Okay, thank you. Have you guys brought up um, AI at all? No, but you can go ahead and get into it if you'd like. Okay, I think that's, um, I don't know why the sirens is going on now, but uh, I think that's a big component in Saturn and the cube um, that, if you even look at the blockchain, you know, you look at some of these companies, you went square, went to block. So a lot of them are like rewriting their own history and going into these smart contracts and just changing over into a new system. Right. But as you see, like most of everything is going digital. And um, if you look at the cube and I'm, I'm glad somebody brought up Jordan Maxwell because that's where my journey began as well. Like so long ago, I was learning about maritime law and how it, you know, correlates into the court system and how it correlates into Saturn and how our court system is connected into um, even degrees and uh, even, you know, the the hats that you wear when you um, when you're graduating you know, like it all symbolizes the, the cube, that block, because you're a part of a particular system, um, which is connected to Saturn system. Um, if you look at when people, uh, you know, in the court system, they um, were, uh, and this is all Jonah Maxwell, you know, where the, the uh, what is it called, the gown, you know, the, Court gown. Black robe. Yeah, yeah, the black robe, right. And uh, so that's supposed to be what considered like the Grim Reaper. And so um, it's just so many different symbolisms that is kind of hidden in plain sight. And I was literally just talking to my mom about this. It's like, you know, when Trump got into office, I don't know if I'm, I'm able to say that, but when he got into office, there was all the conspiracy theories went away because there was a town hall meeting that he did and they asked him about these conspiracies and he actually answered the questions. And so 
I'm just looking at the timeline from, from then, from when I was younger until now and how information has filtered out into our consciousness and how now we're at this high vibration that, you know, Lisa was speaking about where we're seeing a system reset right in front of our eyes during our like lifetime, you know, um, where we either can make a change or we can either, you know, make a decision about certain things, but it's literally happening now. And we also see our consciousness being downloaded. And one thing that came to mind is like, gosh, even our comments down to the things that we text, it's all being monitored. But where is this information being filtered to? Where will we a big machine, a quantum computer is the call the beast machine. That's where it's going. Right, right. So all of our conversations, like this thing is going to be so out of our, like out of our power because it'll have literally our conversations downloaded into it. So the only thing that we cannot do is hate each other in order to beat this shit. As much as the more that we they confuse us and the more that they put hate into the, the, the ethers, that's what is going to be the dividing, like our dividers. They already tried to social distance us, right? So now we're able to either to even come on an app and have these discussions and be a part of a of a bigger consciousness. So I'm gonna land there, but I just feel like AI is a big part of this whole thing. And Saturn and Jordan Maxwell, if nobody knows that, definitely, you know, go go back and look. It is so informational. Um, and I'll land there. Yes, for sure. They took a lot of his information off of um, off of um, YouTube, and there's some stuff, you know, still like on other like um, you know video outlets that people can listen to, but it's not the full totality. Um, I had an opportunity to be a co-host on a blog talk show years ago and interview <clears throat> Jordan Maxwell. <clears throat> so earlier this year, I wanted to reach out to him to have him come on Clubhouse to talk about this, right? And, you know, his he has someone that r ran his Instagram, but he's passed away now, so he rest in peace. But um, they agreed, they said yes, and then like um, a couple of days later, they said he was in the hospital, then like a week later, like he passed away. So I never, you know, got him on here. So we have to carry on, you know what I'm saying, the knowledge of the elders and the people that came before us that got them, you know what I'm saying, that maybe people never got to hear their information, but he, he spent his whole life studying all of these things. And so I feel like, you know, um, I can't do it the justice that he did it, but you know, I can do the best that I can. And it really is on everyone to even go out and study this on their own. You know what I mean? So that, you know, but with the, the whole artificial intelligence, um, they, listen, I feel like, you know, what they're battling against is the rise of consciousness, because if the frequencies are what they're using to control the planet, right? The frequencies that's emitted from from um, Saturn, they have to give you, they have to keep your energy very low. And, you know, they hit us with the COVID and all of that stuff. And I guarantee you that th they lost that battle because they fully intended to keep that narrative going a lot longer, but it just wasn't working out. And so they had to, you know what I'm saying, cut sling load on that. And they had to initiate, you know, the war in the Ukraine and Russia. So that was like, they just pulled out another part of the playbook to move, you know, things forward. And so like the food shortages, you guys noticed the, the gas prices went up a lot. Food prices are still skyrocketing, all these different things. This is the end of the matrix. Um, a lot's been going on with like the, with the crypto market has been like bleeding like crazy, you know, people that were, you know, in crypto spaces, like, um, top people, um, have been getting killed and dying. It's a lot going on. Right. And so they're trying to, you know, put in these CDBCs, but they are failing at every turn. They are failing. So, you know, that's why I come on and do these spaces to keep people abreast of, you know, the nature of our reality and also what's going on. 
but stay empowered because you know what I mean? I feel as though that um, everything that they're doing is failing. We are the are the ultimate, you know what I'm saying, intelligence, right? Where I call us the CIs, this, which is the cosmic intelligence, where they're trying to create artificial intelligence. But if you're the prototype, you're not going to create anything better than the original. You understand that's going to be extremely difficult to do. And so it's a, it's a huge task, although they've been working on these ideas for at least, you know, 50 to a hundred years and they've done their testing, they've done their cloning, they've done, you know, we were going to try to watch the children of men, you know, um, the other day in, um, discord, but I couldn't, um, it wasn't showing because there's, um, I think whatever streaming service I was using was blocking it from Discord. But however, the whole idea of the children of men is they're trying to stop people from having women from having babies for like two or three generations because they want to call the population, not because it's so big, but they need it to be at a more manageable um, number so that they can retrofit people into, you know, like, um, you know, artificial intelligence and merge people with machines and then just have a few organic quote unquote beings on the planet that they can, you know, use for their playthings like they do. So it's all, a, 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 you know, it's all, this is something that's been going on for thousands of years on the planet, thousands. And even though it's just thousands of years, that's like a cycle. It's an age, it's an era, it's an epoch that we're, you know what I'm saying, that's coming to an end and we just happen to be living at that time. I say, what a great time to be alive, you know, make sure that <clears throat> you're doing your spiritual work, you know, make sure you're tapping into your magic. Um, I have lots and lots of books on that in my discord and you can have access to the discord through sign up for the Patreon. So you get the Patreon exclusive um, content as well as, you know, um, the entire discord, which has been building for over a year. So I've got tons and tons of um, content in there as well. And I just also want to remind everybody that this week, um, I'm doing a 50% off on all of my um, spiritual consultations. So from today until Friday, anyone that purchases, just sign up for the 30 minute, um, just sign up for the 30 minute consultation and you will get an hour for the 30 minute consultation. That's everybody that signs up between now and Friday. So guys, go ahead and make sure you tap in and take advantage so you can get yourself you know, together before these holidays, you know, the Christmas holidays roll around and then the new year come about, because this is one of the biggest and highest ritual times of the year. But nevertheless, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel no ways tired. <laughs> I feel excited to be alive right now. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like I am doing my part and, you know, moving this, this thing forward, you know, and helping to break down the construct of the matrix by informing people. So anybody else want to chime in before we head out? Hey, yeah, um, I do right quick. Um, Lisa, you know how I be doing. I've been in and out and I haven't really been around the phone and stuff, but um, I did hear her just talk about her spiritual consultations and stuff. I just wanted to chime in real quick, y'all. And, you know, th this is not because I'm Lisa's friend, you know, like, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, I, I was going through, uh, through a little something and I, hey, I called Lisa for a little advice and, you know, she, she I, I guess you want to, I guess you can call it like a little mini spiritual consultation, even, you know, uh, just ask me a few questions and she even did one on, you know, uh, assess the situation and the people involved in everything. And when I tell you, like, like, she she was hitting how how that term go uh she's hitting the nail on the in the hole um i think that's how i go y'all know what i'm talk, trying to say but she did you know and after that call we were on the phone only on the phone for about 10 to 15 minutes but after that call like i'm i'm telling y'all i felt so much better about the situation and everything so you know i highly advise you all to tap in with lisa and do a consultation uh, and take it farther, whatever the case may be. But uh, I just wanted to add that, add my little two cents in on that because she, you know, she she changed a lot of things up for me very quickly, might I add. 
And Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate that. And you ain't looked back ever since. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and I told you, you sh I should have been the first person you called. You talked a whole bunch of people before you talked to me, right? So, <laughs> um, and yeah, we f I tapped right in, flipped that thing around. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we do. You know, very, very empowering. But um, you know, I hope you guys um enjoyed this room today and enjoy the content on Saturn. Okay. Um, if you missed it, definitely go back and listen to the replays. It's only going to be up until the morning. Um, and I will be taking it down to go up on my Patreon. And, um, you know, you want to, the first 40 minutes I go in heavy with all of the, you know, the things that are going on with Saturn, Saturn symbolism. Um, this is part two. We did part one where I was talking about, um, basically Saturn worship and what is going on. All of your, you know, elected officials, your favorite celebrities, you know, um, governmental agencies, like the whole entire system is built upon the whole worship of Saturn. And this goes back thousands of years, thousands of years. So this is a major key. I hope you guys understand that what, you know, this Babylonian, um, you know, I'm sorry, this Saturnian, the Saturnian cube um, information is a major key to your spiritual journey. If for nothing else, for you to understand the nature of your reality, and that's going to help you through your meditations, just having the knowledge help you through your meditations, help you to detach from the matrix, help you to stop worshiping these celebrities and not being able to see what's going on. So basically open up your third eye. With that being said, guys, I thank you all so much for being here. I love you all and I hope to see y'all soon. Bye. Thanks everyone so much for tuning in. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. For full podcast episodes, don't forget to click the link in the description box. Bye, y'all.